I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. All right. Hello, everyone, and peace of the Lord to all of you. Let us have some halal fun. And today we will have a lot of fun together. Please invite your friends. And if you are a person who don't like what we say, uh, you do not need to stay here. Like, you know, you see some people in the comment, they say, just to play the video for us and that's it. I want to say to those idiots, I am playing for you a video so I can comment about it. I'm not here to play video for you. You want to play the video, go watch it yourself. So any potato... He is here, he thinks he is in a restaurant, and we are his waiter. Get out. We do as we wish, not as you wish. You don't like it? You don't pay us. It's for free. And this is not your cable. Hmm? Switch the channel. So today our topic about uh, uh, so-called uh, Basim and uh, Morgan. Uh, before we go there, You know this uh, this guy. Uh, where is his video? All right. Uh, this guy Basim, as all always Muslims, they play victim. So you cannot accuse them to be the criminal. So before you accuse them, they start cry. And this is exactly what they do. But you will see how stupid he is. However, I, I'm sure there's a lot of donkeys who have no brain. They will think he is just saying the truth. But if we watch together, you will see how stupid he is and how he exposed himself, actually. So let us go and see. Well, joining me now to discuss the conflict in Israel and Gaza is a TV host and satirist, Bassam Youssef. Uh, Bassam is... Uh, he's a TV host of which TV? Where? I mean, this guy, he have a program once and he's a TV host. But anyway, yeah, he's a TV host. Hmm. And are you a TV host too? I noticed that this guy, Morgan, before we continue, this Morgan is a, is a you know, I don't want to call him names, but he's a piece of garbage. They are just, you know, trying to find any piece of trash to put it in their program. It's a short time. They want to make money. Just yesterday, he went and he met with the pimp. This is who they are. You know, when you claim to be a journalist and you are trying to, you know, provide something good. So what is the good you, you got from interviewing? Imagine a pimp these days <laughs> is interviewed. And there's millions of people watch the pimp interview. I mean... You know, in the old days, if you see a flaton, if you see a resto, if you say, this day is no, a pimp, a whore, is their guest. And not only guest, is a favorite guest. So we are in a time where those people, they, you know, uh, uh, like one of you asked me, do you like to be in his show? Do you think I'm a pimp? Do you think I'm equal to those trash who they are there? Those people, they are, you know, this guy is just desperate. He bring anyone just to make... Uh, interesting let us say or uh, you know where people they can get angry uh, upset uh, you know because of what happening uh, this is the whole idea for them it's a short time for you it's the blood of your kids all of them they are a bunch of scumbags who is the one next one will be interviewed i mean if there is a scumbag in the world did not invite him to your program so they have a, like, you know, a massive, uh, uh, you know, subscribers. And then, okay, well, who's, who's next? Who tomorrow? Let me search in the internet who is the one 
people, you know, maybe they will get angry if I have him or they will, other side will be so excited to have him. It, this is how it is. It's not about election or selection of something quality. It is for garbage. So we go for a pimp. Now he got the guy and he introduced him as a TV host. You know, I want to know what kind of a job is the one is called TV host. What does that mean? That means nothing these days. As you see, Morgan himself is a TV host. He's a stupid. He says stupid things and he is useless. In fact, he bring a guest in the front of him and he don't say anything useful. Even when he invite people for a so-called debate, he invite two people that are not qualified for any debate. But today is no different as an example for what I am saying. You'll be the judge. So let us hear what he is saying. Uh, great to have you back on the program. I wish it was under different circumstances. Oh, I wish. Um, first of all, what is your reaction to what happened on October the 7th? It's very important, by the way, to know the reaction. You see, if you go in YouTube, you will find, like even me, I, I use the word reaction because I notice how stupid people are. Just type the word reaction and people click. A dog react to a cat. 10 million of you. A chicken react to her egg. 7 million view. A child react to his mama. The cat react to me. I mean, just type the word react and then everybody, everybody react to the react. And then they put a thumbnail to bring people to click at the video. His mouth is open, like reaction for this guy, like his mouth is, ah, like, you know, he opened his mouth as much as he can and he take a picture of himself and he put it there like reaction to the Quran. Ah, his mouth is open like a snake. And obviously, I mean, the reaction now is happening, not before. Now listen, this is the first time he saw it. <laughs> So what is your reaction, uh, Mr. Bassem? Give us, go. We are really interested because you are the only one we care for his reaction. I mean, your reaction is extremely important. You know, like, I don't know what to say, go. Oh, it was terrible, of course. I mean, we kind of get our news kind of also secondhand because- Well, all of your clothes in Egypt is secondhand. And all your weapon in Egypt is secondhand. And even the bread you eat in Egypt is a gift from America. So I have to agree with you that second hand is you and all the people you stand for, not only the news. In order to avoid talking about the topic, right away he starts with mockery. Bully. They are bully. Oh, uh, we get the hand second hand. Look, you got the news second hand. Uh, but he mean that, in fact, that he get it firsthand. How? Go. Because, you know, my, my wife's family, they live in Gaza. They so he have the news, not secondhand, he have it firsthand. Yeah, and your wife's family, they live in Gaza. If you have uh, cousins and uncles there, um, and uh, their house also was bombed. Uh, why? Is that because they are from Hamas or supported Hamas? And by the way, as long as your cousins in Gaza, did they tell you where is the babies, the hostages? I mean, as long as you are making mockery over the news coming from, you have first-hand news. You have the terrorists, your cousins. So did you call your cousin and ask them, hey, where is the baby you kidnapped them? So now he is a plain victim. Look how their houses is bombed. Our houses, the cousins, my cousins, they are bombed. Do you know that? Like, you know, we are victims. You know, we just killed the... We are the one who invade our neighbors and we destroy their houses and we burn their houses and we burn some of them even alive and we rape women and children in their houses. And then we came back with a lot of babies and old women. And uh, my cousins, their house is bombed. Is that fair? All of this to avoid, to admit that he and the one he support, they are a bunch of the criminals. So immediately before even he start about the topic, he play victim. He's an actor, what I can say. We haven't been able to communicate with them for the past. Why they are not using the yoki-toki of Hamas? How come? 
Hamas is calling Qatar every day. Why you don't tell your cousin to use the phone of Hamas so they can call the Prince of Qatar and he can forward the call to you? You are not able to talk to them for a few days. So what about those Israeli poor kids who they did not see their mommy for more than seven weeks? So you know your cousins in Gaza, you are not able to call them, you know, are they, are they babies? Or they are having a gray hair like you? Last three days communication are lost. So uh, we don't know actually what is the, uh, how is they, how are they doing? But you know we're used to that. I mean it's right. just like it's, it's it's very repetitive. We're used to that. We're used to them being bombed every time and moving. Every time what? Every time you attack the Israeli, they bomb you. We're used to that. Do you see it? So you see. I mean, look how scumbag they are. They are the one who attack. They are the one who go there. They are the one who stab. They are the one who put bombs in the bus stations. They are the one who kidnap girls and daughters. And then we use we used to be attacked. We used. The Israelis is attacking us, you know, for fun. You know, just just, just keep attacking us. We used for that. We used to, you know, what we can do. It's like what we can do. Those Israelis are evil, you know, they keep attacking us. We are just victims, we do nothing, you know, we are just people, we come over here, we want to go walk in the, in the sun, have a suntan, and, uh, you know, this is what we want in life, you know, that's it. You know, uh, uh, that's it. You used to be attacked. I want to ask you, scumbag, as long as you are from Egypt, and by the way, you are blonde, and I find it very funny that <laughs> you are an Egyptian, <laughs> Egyptian with the blue eyes. Anyway, <laughs> I wonder how this happened. But anyway, this is a different story. But listen. You used for that. When your country, Egypt, attack Israel, how many times Egypt attack Israel and how many times Israel attack Egypt? We will find that every war it was you, bunch of scumbag, attacking Israel. Israel never attacked you. And each time you go in war with Israel, you got humility and they step and they wipe the floor with you. And then what do you do? They attack us, you know. We used for this, they keep attacking us, you know, those Israeli Jews, you know. So you wage war on them. You attack them, they give you a screwdriver in your anus, excuse me, and then you say the screwdriver is hurting. Can you imagine how ugly and disgusting this mockery is? And you will notice that this guy TV host, Morgan, is an idiot. Shouldn't you say to him, but isn't it you, Arab, who always, by the way, suppose he claims he's an Arab, but he's a blonde with the blue eyes, but anyway. So, isn't it you, potato Arabs, is the one who keep attacking Israel? Who is the one attacking who? Can you name for me the war when Israeli attack Egypt? Give me the name of it. Jordan, Syria, all the neighbors. It is you who, like, you gang like dogs and you go all the way you want to bite the Jews. And then the Jews beat the hell off you, and then you you play victim. You know, in, in, in the, we used to it. You know, those Jews they keep killing us. You know, from one place to the other. Uh, you know, it's just like those Palestinians. They're very dramatic. Ah, Israel killing us. Yeah. yeah, but they never die. I mean, they all. Oh, okay, hold on. They never die. They never die. Are you talking about the Israeli or the Palestinians? Because as I know, you are there to complain about how many civilians they were killed. So are you being now supposedly sarcastic and making a mockery? Or you are talking about the Israeli, which you keep attacking, trying to kill, and they never die. Your faithy prophets come back, Muhammad, police be upon him, and IDF upon him now. He was trying to kill the Jews for the last 1400 years. They never been, they never die. You die. You die with your hate. Who is the one trying to kill everybody?
people who come back. You know, they they are very difficult to exactly like weed, man. This is the situation of Islam. There is no benefit from them. They are weed. They are just causing harm to the yard, to the garden. If we ask this guy, what is the benefit of him? What is exactly his job? Why do you live in Europe? As long as you Muslims, you are smart and you are civil and you believe in a human right and you have a human right and you want to school everybody about what is wrong, what is right. How come you could not establish what is right in your own land? Never. Which Islamic country have a human right? In Israel, you can go right now with a tomato at the prime minister. Can you do that in your country? Mr. Refugee? So if they brag about a human right, suddenly they claim that they are the one who defend the human right, but in their land, nobody have a human right. Why? Because people are like him. They are hypocrites. They give you a speech about the human rights. The second you speak against the president, you and your family will disappear. Literally. You see, even the Israeli, even when they arrest one from the criminals of Hamas, they don't, you, you, you can go and visit, his family can visit him, they can see him, Red Cross can, can visit him, in, in Egypt, in those countries, if, if the uh, secret police arrest you, you don't even have a name in their book. If the family go to check, can we see our son? And you say, which son? We don't have your son. We never heard of him. Go. He's not here. That's it. They take your son. Your son is gone. Continue. To kill. Very difficult people to kill. I, uh -huh. I know because I'm married to one. Yeah, I yeah. I tried many times. Couldn't kill her. Yeah, I tried to kill her many times. I could not kill her. Uh, you know, I understand your wife, she is from Gaza. And they have a very good reputation in Gaza, you know. I mean, your wife is a Palestinian. They are very good, uh, nice, uh, civil people, you know, we have to say. And uh, uh, they have a good reputation everywhere in the world. To the point, nobody in Egypt, they want people from Gaza. Nobody from Emirat want anyone from so-called Palestine. No one in England, no one in Europe, no one in Syria, no one in Lebanon, no one in Libya, nobody in Tunisia, nobody in Algeria, nobody in Morocco, nobody in Emirat, nobody in Qatar, nobody in Bahrain, nobody want you. Why? Should we accept refugees from Gaza? Of course, people will say yes. Remember, we've taken over half a million refugees in just the last handful of years. In 1992, Denmark took in 300 refugees from Palestine. 64% of them have turned into criminals. What happened to the rest? Only 64% turn into criminals? Well, this is a very positive I mean, do you see, guys, how racist those people? They are racist to the point they took half million refugee. Racism. In Saudi Arabia, they have zero refugee. Qatar, they have zero refugee. But the racist West, England as an example, they took half million only. In Denmark, they took a couple of hundreds of Palestinians only. 46% of them they turn to be criminals. That is a good percentage. I mean, they are they very good. Why you see only the positive part? I mean, the negative part. Why you don't see the positive? Why you did not notice that there's 36% they are not in jail yet? Guys, do you see the racism? Only 64% are criminals. But what about the 36% who they are not, because they are underage, they are not considered criminal according to the law of Denmark. <laughs> so, you know, it's very hard to kill us, very hard. Can you tell me why Hezbollah in Lebanon tried to kill you? Do you know, guys, what Hezbollah and the, and, and the Shia militant in Lebanon, they tried to do to the Palestinians in Lebanon? They surrounded their camp for more than a year, more than a year. 
and they allow not neither food neither water neither gas neither fuel neither medicine nothing to enter into the camp did any of you see the Muslims around the world striking making noise nobody the Israeli after attacking them they stop the internet oh you know, stop the internet you know they stop uh, the water oh how we can live without water it's just for a few weeks so you are taking your water from the Israeli taking your fuel from the Israeli taking electricity from the Israeli and you don't even pay for it and then you kill their babies and you kill their women and you want to rape them and you want to kill everybody and you make speeches about we should kill everybody and then if a minister in the government of Israel he says maybe we should nuke them Allahu Akbar how disgusting he just said he want to commit genocide so you and your speeches you say you want to do genocide against them but in their speeches they cannot say the same how come you make speeches saying you want to kill every Jew and nobody get angry in the West, especially those left-minded, stupid people, mentally ill people. Huh? They make a mockery of a bloodshed. They play victims as if they are not the one who did, did the crimes. So you can cry for them. So if you are a Western who speak the language, this language you speak, you, you know, and you have a tattoo in your head and your hand and your ass and your vagina, and you have some rings here and tears and tears, you know, and you know, you are from Washington DC and you are Antifa and those uh, hippie, mippy, tippy, you know, God knows what they want from this earth, nobody knows. And then he will say, see, Look what they are doing to the Palestinians. They keep killing them. Did you see what this guy said? But if you go check the document, you will see that every single war Israel faced, it was those Muslims who started it. Every single one of them. Each one. We have here a guy, his name Islam is Piss. He keep coming here. Get out of here. I have no time for the urine of your prophet. Don't come here again. Admins, anytime this guy come to the chat, just to block him with his name. Hold your tone. My friend, we don't hold the tone. And we will not hold the IDF. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. I will show you what the IDF they are doing to your Hamas just in a minute. Stay, stay, don't leave. Go, uh, Susu Dudu, Muta boy. I mean, there's a dark humor there, and I understand why. Because no, it's not dark humor. I really, I it's try not. to get to her every time, but she uses our kids as human shields. Okay, hold on, hold on. You are talking about a human shield. You scam back. Who is the one hiding in their houses and their hospitals? Is it the Jews? How come your garbage in Gaza? They can throw a rocket at the cities and towns and burn them. How come you don't complain about Hamas putting bombs in a bus for a school? And now you do not remember that the one who kidnapped babies and women and children and brought them to Gaza, he, the whole target of it is to use them as a human shield. So do you see those come back? They are the one who use a human shield. And now he is making mockery, playing victim. I mean, can you believe it? Who is the one who take women? She is over the age of 90. Who is the one who take a baby is eight months old? Can you believe it? You remember when the Israeli they said that in the Shifa hospital there is a headquarter operation quarter for Hamas all the Muslims you know disgusting Israeli and those hippie atheists and Tifa all the garbage in, in America and all those hippies in Europe 
disgusting genocide they are even targeting you know churches mosques uh, you know but there is there's only one church left the muslim burn all the churches by the way if you are a muslim you burn a church the western people don't complain go check right now in the last 10 years how many churches are burned in egypt have you ever seen those atheists speak about genocide go and see how many christians are burned alive in nigeria in mozambique and all africa did you see any of them speaking about a human right and genocide? All those organizations you see, they are moved by the money of somebody. Somebody is in control. You notice that all this madness goes as soon as Muslims are involved. I can understand if the Muslims in the West, they are moving, protesting. Well, that's normal. They are Muslims. But how come those Western white people or even black people, whatever color you are, how come your sense of a humor, your sense of a humor right, which is a sense of a humor for me, doesn't move unless it's a Muslim. And this Muslim, he wants to kill every gay every lesbian, every atheist, every Christian, every Hindu, every Buddhist, but still you go in the street to defend them because of money. There's a powerful money machine is moving everything. The media, all of those. They cry when there's a criminal is being killed. They dance when there's a victim is suffering. This is the Shefa Hospital. This is what? This is the tunnels under the Shefa Hospitals. What they have there, shall we see? Let us watch together. Hospital compound underneath the ground. We are approximately between the Qatarian building is above us. See the Qatar building above us. Who? Qatar, Qatar. Qatar. The way to the street, meaning this is a way that goes out outside from the hospital. We are talking about a tunnel, which is more than this. Only this specific area is more than 300 meters of a tunnel. So this area goes directly outside of the hospital approximately to one of the areas outside, maybe a mosque, maybe an apartment. It's blocked. It's blocked and sealed. They knew that we were going to come here more than a month ago and they sealed it. And now we're going to see the infrastructure of the tunnel. This tunnel is a, is a complex tunnel. It's not, a, it's not the ones that we know. It's more convenient for a long living, like you have toilets. Look at this. And you <laughs> have rooms. Rooms that were built in order to contain people. But this room is an operational room that had communication with electricity provided from the source. See, where is the, the, this way they will ever... Do you, do you know why they keep asking we want the fuel for the hospitals? What is the excuse hospitals? We have injured people. This, they are sick. This is against the human right. This is war crime. But the electricity and the internet and the water and all the supplement, including food and medicine and everything, is going down to Hamas under the hospital. This is of the hospital, meaning the hospital is providing electricity. This room was evacuated, all the gear was evacuated. I guess it was evacuated when they, when they knew or understand that we're going to enter into Shifa Hospital. You can see how long it is. The warriors in front of us are going inside the tunnel. You can see a small kitchen. So it will provide them food, water, etc. All these facilities of water and food are coming from the hospital, meaning they're using the hospital infrastructures. They're using the hospital infrastructures in order to provide this terror. I have a breaking news before I continue. U.S. Canada border is closed in New York. 
after explosion. However, I don't think this is terrorism. I think it's just a Muslim being angry. You know the media in the West. If it is a Christian prince, if it is a Christian, eh, this is a hatred crime. This is a terrorism. Uh, all the ones who vote for Trump, they are terrorists. Everybody, 70 million Americans, they are terrorists. Hmm? But when a terrorist attack, okay, explosion in the border, how explosion? How, how explosion happened, but there's no sign of terrorism? And why you close the border then? If it's not terrorism, it's mean whatever. It is it's somebody fought. Let the border open. They're trying to destroy bridges. But remember, it can't be a sign of terrorism. Continue. Your mechanism to stay alive and survive. Hold on, hold on. 16 minute rainbow bridge explosion two, two explosion and there's no sign of terrorism. I mean those explosions they happen by themselves. Listen, listen, listen. I mean those 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 uh, those uh, uh, the media of Antifa and the media of Joe Biden and his scumbags is beyond imagination. If it is one explosion, okay, you know what somebody farted. Hmm? Somebody, he ate too much beans. You know, American they eat beans, right? Two explosion, and it's still, it is not terrorism? Like, is it normal to have two explosion in, in a border? And this is not terrorism? Uh, and two dead after a vehicle explode at U.S. Canada borders. Why the vehicle explode? I think I know the reason. We have to play in Israel. Guys, do you don't you think the Zionist is behind it? It must be the Zionist. We have to play in the Jews. Somebody has come back, he will come now and he will say to you, the one behind it is the Jews and they are trying to cause a chaos in the state. It's not Hamas, it's not Al-Qaeda, it's not the Muslims, it, it is the Jews. We go back to the hospital. And look at this Jew. He is jealous because Hamas, they have a tunnel under the hospital. So what? Isn't it all of us like to have to find free internet, free electricity paid by United Nation? Who of us hate that? Hamas, they thought about it. What is the best place to build a location for them? where we can have a free internet. Even if there is a war, we will have internet. Even if there is a war, we will have electricity. Because if they cut the electricity from the hospital, the whole world will be angry. This way we can still in operation and we are watching TV. <laughs> you can see how long it is the warriors in front of us are look how big look inside the tunnel you can see a small look kitchen. at the kitchen here so we will provide them food water etc all these facilities of water and food are coming from the hospital meaning they're using the hospital infrastructures they're using the hospital infrastructures in order to provide this terror mechanism to stay alive and survive I want to show you more rooms, more rooms. This is a room yeah, where you can sleep, eat, make command control. It also has... Breaking news, another attack in Los Angeles. Attack on a bridge, freeway damage by fire 
reopen and may you know do you remember the fire happened just a few uh, days ago in Los Angeles in the highway at that time they said it clearly it is an arson act somebody did it who is the one who did uh, who is the one doing the hmm I will give you names and you choose one the first one his name Jacob Shalom the second one his name Sh Shalom Jacob the third one, his name, Shalom, Shalom, Jacob. Choose one. None of them, his name is Osama or Ahmed or Hassan or Muhammad. We have, it must be the Jews. Who's going to do it? We, all of us, we know Islam is peace. Ask George Bush. Ask Obama. How many times those president, they said Islam is peace. Even the rabbi who debated the scumbag Mimi Hijab, he said to him, Islam is beautiful. So even when you bring a rabbi to get them busted, the rabbi is a donkey. And instead of saying to him, you are filthy like you're a prophet, he killed women, he killed the children, he raped our people. He said to him, Islam is beautiful. Everything is wrong. The rabbi is a donkey. The Muslim making fun of your kids. And they are fooling them. And you believe everything they say to you. And then you go strike in the street like a donkey, say free Palestine. And instead of condemning their act and their filthy religion, we cry for them and we say they are victims and not only that, people, they donate for them. And where the donation to go? To Hamas. And by the way, they keep saying to you that Gaza is poor. So who is the one building those high buildings? Do you see houses with the, you know, like the one you see in the this, in this, in this slum in the Philippines? The one you see in Africa where people, they have... Uh, you know, cover, no blanket, no nothing. Do you see anything of that? Did you see those Palestinian women, each one of them in the size of a truck? Do they look like people, they are hungry? Did you see any one of them, he don't have a house made of concrete? Where is the poor people of Gaza? Where the money is coming from? Drugs? As long as Israeli are surrounding them, they don't allow them to do anything. We want to know how all those buildings are built. Remember, the Israelis are bad. Do you know how much concrete need to make a city under the city? Where is the money coming from? For people who they are poor. So not only they have many floors, buildings, they have many floors under the ground. Who paid for this? That is a good question, isn't it? Always you have to trace the money. But we are in a world of stupidity. They just showed you the tunnel, but nobody asked, okay, who, is, who paid for this? Not only the weapon they have, who paid for this? This is very costly. Where the money is coming from? Always chase the money, you will know. Like, you know, how come if somebody traveling, like, you know, they check. So if they find a person coming uh, flying and somebody else paid for his ticket, that is suspicious. Mostly it's a drug dealer. Who paid for all of this? How the money is coming? Who is behind it? Why we are wasting our time and we keep saying Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. Hamas, if there is no money, there is no Hamas. If there is no money, there is no Hamas. Those fighters in Hamas, they have salary, they have retirement, 
they have uh, health insurance they have if they die their family get paid every month so who with the money where is the money coming from and why the stupid Israeli government they could not stop the money in fact just to let you know the stupid Netanyahu he himself by his hand he delivered the money every month from Qatar to Hamas if you don't believe me go check it out this is how we strip it every single government for the last 20 years in Israel a bunch of donkeys thinking if we let the money go in and those people okay build houses have fun you know grow okay we, you know uh, we will have peace because that's it the, the, the economy is st stable and uh, you know money is coming from everywhere so leave them alone they will leave us alone did they leave you alone did they Qatar, Qatar, Iran is bankrupt. Iran as a country is bankrupt. They don't have money. Iran, they can train them. Iran can teach them how to do things. But Iran is bankrupt. The money is coming from Qatar. The head of the snake is Qatar. Erdogan himself cannot help them. Why? Because they are bankrupt too. He can give them shelter. He can give them uh, camps. But he cannot, he don't, he, he's not capable of giving money. All the money is coming from Qatar. Air conditioning. This air conditioning goes above the hospital. One of the reasons that allows us to understand this complex is that we found the engine or the air conditioning, of course, outside, next to the Qatari uh, compound, inside the hospital, electricity, full electricity. The gear that was inside here was evacuated before we entered, but look at the ceiling. This is not just a, it's not just a regular town. This is a high facility compound. And look, the terrorists, they don't like to have a roof without uh, like <laughs> a decoration, you know? I mean, he will, not, he will not like to see a concrete in the top of him. So he put uh, he put uh, a new roof like a, with decoration and, and nice, and they have your conditions. They have your conditions too. Or so more toilets here. <laughs> yeah, because this is a nation who pays a lot. I mean, they get pissed from everything. You make a cartoon, they get pissed. You make a movie, they get pissed. You say a word, they get pissed. It's a pest of nation. They are pest. Even when the Arab, they send them food, they get pissed. Did you see the video of the guy saying, look, look, you know, thank you, Arab. Thank you for the donation. You sent us best squid at one year old. Even the water, the water doesn't taste good. So you send them food for free. You send them money for free. You send them water for free. And then they spit at you. This is why Saudi Arabia don't care for them no more. I mean, all of thing, these things that they are making, etc. They will never care for them. They gave them billions of dollars before. At the end, they spit at them and they curse the Saudi. And they curse the Emirati. In fact, there's videos on YouTube you will see how those called Palestinian, they go chase Saudi and Emirati and they spit at them. Or so, more toilets here. Of course, they tried to seal it. They tried to seal it also with with sand and other components that we will not be able to enter here. We evacuated the sand. We opened up those uh, entrance so we can go in. But they tried to ruin uh, this tunnel in order for us not to not to be able to enter. Look how long. Look how big. And this is, by the, by the way, after many are blocked, there's many places they could not go in because they put a lot of sand inside. And those uh, soldiers, they have to be careful when they move the sand because they might, they might mean there is a trap in there. There's a bomb or, you know. The stairs here going down. Electricity from all over the sides are electricity.
all this electricity compound of course all this electricity gear of course comes out from the hospital the hospital provides in that sense electricity to this terror mechanism of the tunnel this is a unique signature of the arches the arches are a unique technique by Hamas building the tunnels it's something that was uh, uh, designed in the last uh, 15 years this unique mech every every area that we see arches are uh, we understand that it assembled that it has a tunnel next to it this is how we revealed some of the tunnels so it's a unique structure of Hamas tunnels in the last 15 years By the way, I have a good news. This guy, he won the election. Uh, Dutch election, Garrett, who is obviously, uh, by the way, he's Islamophobic. <laughs> Anyone who speak about the scumbag of Islam is Islamophobia. Yeah, but by the way, don't have a phobia. No, 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 no. They, do, they don't rape your kids or kidnap them. No, 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 no. This is this is all is a phobia. Phobia, phobia. That's not true. It's a very peaceful religion. No, no, no. If you have eight month old baby, they will not kidnap him or kill him. No, 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 no. Don't worry. If you are 90 years old women, they will not kidnap you. No way. Those people who speak against Islam and uh, uh, what Muslims do, they are they, they are Islamophobic. They are Islamophobic, I'm telling you. Don't listen to them. They lie, they lie. So as you see here, it says, uh, Wilder, and by the way, look look what the, the, the European media, they say he is far right party. You see, they, they give you a title, you are far right. You are middle right. I mean, they give you a name right away, you know, like just to, uh, the title is ready. Uh, <laughs> what in the world you elect somebody who is an Islamophobic shame on you all the danger of Islam is not exist it's a phobia ISIS does not exist I mean it's true they killed hundreds of thousands Al-Qaeda, they rape and they killed and they enslaved uh, uh, Muslim Brotherhood in Syria and Libya and uh, they killed and raped and they burned churches and they burned Christians and they burned even Muslims. But, but listen, all of this is nothing but phobia. It's fake news. You see, even the, the Israeli when they show you images of those uh, who were kidnapped. First of all, all of this is fake images. If you look as an example, look, this is, I, I, saw, I saw actually <laughs> a video. She was saying, look, you know, she was saying how they are kidnapped and they are smiling. The stupid women, she think that those pictures are taken when they were kidnapped. I mean, can you believe how stupid those monkeys? So she was questioning. Okay, so they are kidnapped and they are smiling. Who want to believe that is? This is the woman who did, you know, we saw her video recorded by Hamas. She was kidnapped, they put her in the motorcycle, and look at her, and now she is dead. They found her dead. Where? In a Shifa hospital. And this has come back, Basim Youssef, he is complaining about bombing hospitals. How come they are bombing hospital and the hospital is there? So the Israeli weapon, they are so, are they, are, is that fair work? How they bomb the hospital and the hospital is still there.
So they have a tactic. Look at this old woman. She cannot walk. They took her with the, you know, this is the golf cart. Look, look at this woman. She doesn't even know what's going on. Why in the world you take such a woman? And this has come back, Yusuf, claiming that the Israeli is the one using a human shield. This is Noah Argamani, not Noah Marxino. Okay, maybe I'm mistaken then, maybe, I'm not sure. Well, I don't want any one of them to die, but, you know, we heard in the news that the one, her name is Noah. Uh... Lord have mercy. So they kill you, they slaughter you, and then they claim that they are the victim. They are the victims. It's not you, it is them. And this uh, Morgan, in a, you know, look, look at his face, like, you know, uh, those uh, TV, this kind of TV host, they remind me of somebody have a diarrhea. Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand that. Uh, where are you? I mean, you don't have anything to say? We thought you say anything, and then the thing that is the uh, hard time, hard time for you. I mean, can you believe? that the women I showed you previously look like Asian? Are you sure? No, she is not Asian. Anyway. <clears throat> By the way, she is not Israeli. Hmm. If you look at this guy who is hosting the TV show, you will feel like this guy, he lost his energy. It's like just a guy, he came from the gym. He was running for 10 hours. And he's talking so slow on his head. Where are you? Why you don't get him busted? You know, if you want to make a show and you have only one guest, then you have to represent the other of you. You don't let that guy just, you know, bark like a dog nonstop. What about you say to him, okay, you know what, uh, okay, uh, uh, you have a family in Gaza, you have cousins in Gaza. What about those kids are killed? What about you call your cousin and ask them where is the victims, where is the, where is the kidnapped woman? Don't you have a cousins in Gaza? Call them. Are you telling me not one of your cousins are a member of Hamas? I can never take her out. Again, I understand the, the humor, but I, to be serious, uh, Bassem, about this, tonight there okay, is... I will be serious. No, I, I, I will be serious. I was watching your interview with Ben Shapiro, and I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. I think that Ben Shapiro is one of the smartest people... But because you are a donkey. If Ben Shamir Shapiro is the smartest person for you, you must be the most stupid person ever. Continue. Whoever walked this earth, he's very, very smart. Uh, is he smarter than your prophet Muhammad? I follow him, and I believe everything he said. Uh -huh. And when he came out on your show, his solution was, and I quote, uh -huh. his solution was that the solution for this is for Israel to annex Gaza. And You are a bin, you, you know, you are a son of a whore, and you are a liar. This is what he said. He said, is to kill every one of Hamas. It is you Muslims who say, we should kill everyone in Israel. So do you see guys how they play the upside down? Did Ben Shapiro say, we have to kill everybody in Gaza, women, children? I mean, you are a big fat liar. And listen, the host, he didn't say to him, no, he did not say that. I mean, this host, what his job? Shouldn't you say to him, okay, hold on, he was in my show where he said that, remind me. The program is there. Where he said we have to give every person in Gaza. And instead, this host... Uh,
This is a TV host. Shouldn't you say to him, where Ben Shabiro, he said what you are saying. Instead, okay, I understand, which means you agreed he said that, but he did not. <sighs> he did not say it directly. No, we know what uh, everybody mean, that they have to finish Hamas. They have to finish Hamas. He did not say we have to, and you know, hold on. Let us say for the sake of argument, Ben Shabiro, he said that. Who is Ben Shabiro? Is he the prime minister of Israel? Is he even an Israeli? What Ben Shabiro have to do with it, even though, you know, like, I mean, look how stupid, silly, you know, scumbags they are. If this guy, he said, we have to kill all the Jews, is he from there? No. We are talking about war. They talk about Ben Shabiro. We talk about war. The war involved Israeli and those who live in those territory, which is part of Israel. Who care what Ben Shabiro said? And he did not say that. It is you Muslims who say we have to kill every Jews. And you know, if we go right now and watch the videos, which is made by the leaders of Gaza, Every single one of them, he says, we should kill every single Jew. Every single Jew, not Israeli. Somebody saying, would you like to go in the Paris Morgan show? No. I will never accept to be in his such a stupid show. When you associate yourself with a stupid person, a stupid show, you must be stupid like them. The first thing for somebody to host a show, as they call it, it's a show anyway, it's not even real. Show is show, it's just entertainment. Which means there's no education, there's nothing, you know, there's no benefit. It's a show. That's why they call it show. It's not, it's not called the class. It's not called training. It's called show. People want to kill time. So if I want to be with somebody... I want to be with somebody he speaks smart, he asks smart, and he answers smart. When you associate yourself with donkeys, you will look like a donkey. And you will talk with donkeys. In order to do so, you have to speak the language of donkeys. People, they go in such a program just to become famous. That's all. This guy, he had big numbers of, uh, of the viewers. And if you want to be famous, be there. But is it really my, my business to be famous or my business to be truthful? We have a guy, he keep arguing with the admins. Admins, anyone he argue with you just to block him. You don't like to come here. We have a topic. If you are coming here to call the admins names, get lost. Nobody is asking you, if you don't like the admin, leave. All of them are the same equality. They play victims and they take advantage that the host is a donkey. He is so submissive. The host is so submissive. This guy, he washed dishes for his wife for sure. Even, even if his wife is doing nothing. So when they see the host is so submissive, the Muslim, they will ride on his shoulders. It's a fact. To kill as many son of bitches as possible to make sure... Well, I agree. We have to kill, every, excuse my language, every son of a bitch of Hamas. Why not? 
is it in your country? In your country, you sentenced to this many Muslim terrorists? In your stupid country. So how come in your stupid country, in your stupid government, in your stupid president, you can kill every son of a bitch of those terrorists, but they cannot kill them in Israel? How come it's lawful for you and it's not against a human right for you, but it's against a human right for them? Do you see the hypocrite? Every single Muslim country, if an organization killed anyone, the punishment is death. How the police they arrest those terrorists? By gun machines, shooting them dead or alive, get them and then they hang them. So how come in your country, you go after them with guns, you use even airplanes like what happened in Sinai not far away go and see how how many how many attack happened in Sinai the the Egyptian government they use airplanes they use artillery they use tanks they use missiles they use rockets to find the terrorist how come there nobody complain there's the, the Egyptian government they wipe even villages from existence in fact, there was a city, it's called Old Rafah. Called what? Old Rafah. Do you see now we, we, the, the Gaza they have? They have a border, right? Correct? But there is a city called Old Rafah. Old Rafah. The old one. That one, the one close to the border is destroyed. If we go right now to Syria and we look at the pictures, what we will find? Did you see the Muslims in Egypt going crazy? How come they go crazy only with Israel? Let us see here. I'm opening the maps. See here, this is Gaza. And this is Egypt. Close to the borders, there used to be a lot of Bedouin who have their villages and cities and, I mean, uh, uh, houses, etc. The Egyptian government, they destroyed everything. In every inch in Sinai, there was a war. You know what war is? Literally, war. Let me see. All oh, those videos. This is Egypt. The video name. Look, look, look how the Egyptian, they are dealing with the ground. They do carpet bombing to kill the terrorist. Here the title is, Killing, Shooting, I'm not going to show the video, 
the soldier here he will shoot the captured terrorist alive in front of you in the camera they're recording If I use, let me use Google Translation. Hold on, give me a second. Rear video, watch what the Egyptian army did to terrorists in Sinai. So the Egyptian army can do, use airplanes and rockets and kill as many as he can. The, Egypt, the, the Israeli army cannot do that. You cannot. Only Muslims have license to kill terrorists. You should not kill terrorists. You have no license. I'm trying to find the video. It's not working. The video is not working. I tried to open it. Here we go. Look. Look, this is the Egyptian, this is the Egyptian army fighting against their own Hamas. Hmm. They can do all of this, but you cannot do it. They have a license to kill. This is the Egyptian army. Another video. Is that a city? Is that a houses? Is that villas? What is this? It is. Is the Egyptian army shooting rockets, RBG, uh, uh, missiles, tanks? This is not a movie, this is a real video of a real war with the organization the same as Hamas. In the comment you will see the Muslims saying, may Allah bless you, army. Look, nobody's angry. May Allah give you victory, the army of Egypt. I just use Google Translation. May Allah protect you, have wide mercy on murder, and give patience to their family. Long life, Egypt. They are killing Muslims, terrorists. If Hamas operate in Egypt, they shoot them immediately. If the Israelis shoot Hamas in Israel, every Muslim get upset. Hypocrites. And in their way, they destroy towns and cities. It's okay. No problem. Egypt, go and do airstrike in Libya is okay. Saudi, go and do airstrike in, uh, in Yemen is okay. 
Imara do air strike and killing many people is okay. What if the Israeli did that too? To join the club? No, it's not okay. It's not. This is a real war. Is it okay? Or it's not? We will not play it because YouTube saying you have to be signing whatever. Yeah, forget. So do you see how they are hypocrites and how they are liars? They in their own land, they don't mind to kill everyone who carry an arm action against the government, not even necessarily civilians. But if the Israeli did that, the Israeli are very ugly, disgusting. In fact, all Israeli, all, all Islamic governments, all Islamic countries, they kill Muslims non-stop. You know, there is a reason, by the way. The American, they went to Iraq. And then they want the Iraqi to have a legitimate government election. So they want to have election, okay, they do have election, we have election, and then the election is what? The election, they elect, they elect a terrorist. Those are stupid Americans, they think those countries, they can survive if they have a person, a president who isn't a dictator. Those countries cannot survive without a dictator. Dictator is the only solution. The second you give them freedom, everybody will be killing everybody. The second they notice that the president or the government are weak, the killing machine will start. Cities will go upon cities. Town will go upon towns. Shia will kill Sunni. Sunni will kill Shia. They will kill Christian. They will kill everybody. This is why in the Middle East, having a dictator is a must. The stupid Western took them century to learn that this is not Europe. Those are savage people. It is reality. They are my people. You told them democracy, they will kill. The stupid Western, they decide to give democracy to Libya. Go and look what we have in Libya. Oh, we will take a Gaddafi. he is a dictator. We want to have election. Good luck with the election. Now, Libya is killing Libya nonstop for the last 10 to 15 years. The same they did with Syria. Oh, Syria is a dictator. We need to replace the Syrian president. Eh, good luck with Syria now. Syria now become many Syria. Syria ISIS, Syria Al-Qaeda, Syria Kurdish, Syria Alawi, Syria Shia, Syria Iran, Syria Sunni, Syria American, Syria Iranian, Syria, any Syria you want. Western are very genius. Those people, they don't understand any language except violence. The second they see a dictator, he is strong, they behave. The minute they see that he is dying, everybody want to put his knife in the cow. It is reality. And I challenge anyone to say this is not true. You see, why Saudi Arabia is still intact together? Saudi Arabia, there's many, many problems inside. There's many tribes, they hate each other. There's many tribes against each other. There's many tribes, Shia, Sunni. There's hatred. There's a, there's a tribe who believe they should be the real family. What, what, what is making Saudi Arabia still intact together? Because they are terrorists. The royal family are terrorists. Anyone open his mouth, what they will do to them. Do you know what they did to Khashoggi in Turkey? Anyone remember? Hmm? They made him shish kebab. Literally. 
So even if you are abroad in different country, they will send their men to cut you pieces and grind you in the grind machine and let your skin and meat goes in the sewage. Until now, they could not find the guy. This is the Middle East. It is reality. Why the Muslims don't go and strike in the street for a killing machine happening in Syria for the last 15 years? If we look at Syria, <coughs> look those uh, human rights and TIFA, and you know they are uh, upset only for Gaza. Other people, they don't. Mm, it's okay. You know their human rights get activated by Qatar when they want. This is Syria. Dust. Dead cities. And by the way, all of this because of Islam. Wherever the garbage the Islamist goes and the filth of Qatar goes, this is what happen. It goes with Qatar. This country was fine, everything is fine. And then Qatar pumped a lot of money to the Islamists. And the Islamists will not accept a president who is not a Muslim Sunni. Jihad. And the war started. And where is the money coming for the war? Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Emirat, Bahrain, and then our friendly Muslim neighbor Barack Obama Barack or Barack <laughs> if you remember McCain John McCain the scumbag he went to Syria and he took pictures with the he called them rebels the terrorists of Syria the Mujahideen who burn churches you know kill Christians uh, uh, John McCain, even he defended him. They said to him, so how come they were shouting Allah Akbar next to you? He said, oh, Allah Akbar in Arabic means God is a great. <laughs> you see, well, Allah Akbar when they want, it is terrorist. Allah Akbar when they want, Allah mean uh, Allah is a great, you know. They are not terrorists, those are friendly. What are you talking about? Those are very peaceful protesters, you know. Are you kidding me? This is why we have to give them missiles and rockets and tanks because simply they are uh, peaceful. What's wrong with you? Do you think really those people, they are, uh, you know? And by the way, a lot of pictures you see in the internet is fabricated. Like, you know, you see a picture like this child here, you know, you know, fake pictures. And, you know, people believe the same as in war now, like in Gaza. Tons of fabricated pictures. They put a child with the makeup in his face and dirt and etc. And the guy, he opened his mouth and there's a dust behind. You know, remember, Photoshop is very wonderful. I can be back 17 years old, even though I'm 19 now, uh, by Photoshop. This is why these days, uh, women, they prefer Chinese phones. I mean, she just go back 20 years just by opening the app in her phone. So, but is the war real? Absolutely. Did hundreds of thousand people die? It's true. What is the reason? You will find always the reason behind all of this garbage is Islam. Wherever Islam goes, disease, plague, death come with it. Prove me wrong. They cannot live in peace. They cannot. The religion of Islam is the problem.
when the stupid American and the stupid European, France and etc., they want democracy to Syria. They want what? Democracy. Okay. If you have democracy in Syria, what does that mean? Oh, people, they elect what they want. Oh, okay. And then what? If somebody decides to leave Islam, we chop his head. That is their democracy. People, they decide what they want. If somebody is a gay, they will kill him. If somebody is an atheist, they will chop his head. Is that what you are seeking? What, what, what do you mean by democracy? They did the same in Algeria. Algerian government. France put a lot of pressure on Algeria to go for election. It's time for election. Enough dictators. Then the election happened. And who is the one who won? The terrorist. Suddenly France don't want such a government. And the war started. How many people get killed? More than a million. Islamist. Every single one who speak in the name of Islam, even the one who speak to you with a friendly face. If you put them in office, immediately, immediately death will come. So as you see, Islamists, wherever they go, war is started. And then who is killing who? Muslim killing Muslims. But nobody complained. Erdogan, he made a speech one day against the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. He called him a criminal. He want to bring him to court. Correct? You remember? As soon Erdogan, his country, in need of money, Erdogan is kissing the ass of Saudi Arabia. They forgot everything. Money. He was barking like a dog, non-stop. All of this to get paid. The Crown Prince found it hard to forgive Mr. Erdogan attitude after the murder, suggesting that the Prince was directly responsible. Look who is going to who, who, who will forgive who? <laughs> the murderer, <laughs> the one who killed the guy, he's not responsible. Are you kidding me? He have no idea what's going on. Those are my men. They go kill people in the street without telling me. I'm just a crown prince. I'm nobody. Yes, it's true that the intelligence they have to tell me everything. It's true every important decision have to come through me. But you know what, Erdogan, it's hard to forgive you. Kiss, kiss my shoes, kiss my shoes. Erdogan, he just uh, a week ago, he called the same to Israel. Crime, uh, you know, we will announce Israel as a, a, a war criminal. Just wait. Six months, eight months from now, he will come to Israel, he will kiss their ass. Who want a bet? Hmm? Who want a bet? You want to bet? Will not even take him a year maximum. Erdogan, the same guy who is now so angry. Do you know why? Because he knew what is the consequence of being you know, the, the, the enemy of Israel. Actually, I saw a video already. Netanyahu threatened Erdogan that we are going to support your enemy. 
I can look for the video on Viber. If you notice, when they have a march for Israel in Washington, D.C., who is the ambassadors was in the front? Cyprus and Greece. Do you see the message? Cyprus and Greece. Which means the Israeli is saying to him, behave yourself or else. We can arm your enemy with the most advanced weapon. They can make your ship go down and sink like cockroaches. 300,000 they march in Washington, D.C. for Israel. And two foreign ambassadors. Greece and Cyprus. I am sure you know that this is not what was not a coincidence. It was a big flag for those like Erdogan. Be careful. If you notice that when Putin he announced that he support Hamas, three days after the foreign minister of Israel, he went to Ukraine. It's very strange, isn't it? To go to Ukraine in a time like this. So Israel, my friend, is not somebody you can play with. They can screw you up. This is why Erdogan, he is a mute now like a dog. This is a country, whatever happened in October 7, because of a stupid technology, they bent on it, but still they are the best in technology, the best in weapon, and they are very powerful army. In fact, even America, most of our technology here depend on Israeli scientists. And then they bring this idiot and he want to school us about a human right. A person who is running himself from his own land because there is a zero human right in it. That this will never happen again. And anyone, anyone who called for a ceasefire will be a terrorist sympathizer. So God... Sure, sure. You know, I will go with you. When first day Egypt attacked Israel, do you want me to show you your videos? Should I search for them? It's speaking about the victory of the Egyptian army? Six days, and then you, Egyptian, and all the Muslims, you start asking for a ceasefire. In the first day, Allah Akbar. As usual, Allah Akbar Takbir, go. Then the Israeli, they give you a screwdriver in your anus. Then what you do, you go and kiss at that time the ass of the Soviet Union to stop the war. What are the pros and cons in ceasefire? I don't care about the pros and cons. This is not the Amazon review, my friend. Uh, the fact is that when you go for war, it is not time for ceasefire. And as long as you did not finish the mission, so what is ceasefire for? That's all. Are, are we done? No. So ceasefire for what? And always the one who asks for ceasefire is the one who is losing. If Hamas is the one who is victorious, if Hamas is advanced inside Israel right now and taking cities one after one, do you think this scumbag will ask for ceasefire? Just be honest with yourself. Do you think those who they are striking now for ceasefire everywhere in San Francisco, those scumbags, 
If the Hamas is the one invading cities, taking one after one, do you think anybody will go in the street and ask for ceasefire? No. It doesn't matter how many Jews die. It doesn't matter how many women rape. It doesn't matter how many children are burned alive. They will never ask for ceasefire. Ceasefire is when they are losing. In fact, that was the command in the Quran. Muhammad himself, he practiced the same tactic. He signed a ceasefire. When he's weak. Until he regroup, prepare himself, getting stronger, he attack and the enemy thought that they have peace the Quran made it clear you cannot ask for seas of fire unless you are not the uppermost Everything they do is in their yellow pages book. The filthy Quran. So be not weak and ask not for peace from the enemies while you have having the upper hand. Do you see it? So when the Muslims are allowed to have to ask for peace, this peace will be temporary. Until they have the upper hand, then they attack again. But they are forbidden to ask for peace as long they have the uppermost. See now Egypt signed peace agreement with Israel. Do you think this peace agreement will live? I assure you, I don't know when this will be broken, but I assure you, as I know everything about myself, I can see it that the war with Egypt is coming. Those are Muslims. The only way to have peace with them if your neighbors are not Muslims. In the Quran, in chapter 9, Muhammad, he signed a peace agreement with his enemies. <clears throat> you see the chapter here is called a Tawbah. Tawbah mean uh, like you know uh, repent but this is not the real name of the chapter the real name of it is Bara'a what Bara'a is it is the first word here Bara'a what does word mean freedom from all obligation of peace agreement kill them he signed peace agreement with them he regroup, he prepare his army, his stupid enemy, they are taking honeymoon, and then suddenly he send them a warning, you have four months, either you leave the town or I'm going to slaughter you all. Four months. After four months, anyone I see here is dead. He took over the city already. You have four months. Then those people, what they will do? I mean, they will lose uh, their houses, their animals, their uh, everything. They convert to Islam. And Muhammad, he promised he will chase them to the end of, even if they go to China. Bara. So this is what they would do with Israel. Sooner or later, the Muslim, they will say to the Israeli, Bara'a. And if you don't understand your enemy, that your fault, and this is your stupidity. Until now, there's a lot of donkeys, by the way, in Israel. They think they can reach peace with those Middle Eastern Muslims. You cannot. 
because they are motivated by their religion, not by argument about land. This is not about a land. Only stupid people think that this is about a land. The war is religious war. Muslims versus Jews, Muslims versus Christians, Muslims versus atheists, Muslims versus Hindus, Muslim versus Buddhist. And if the Muslim kill all non-Muslims, then Muslim they will kill Muslims because there is many Muslims. This is why I say to you, Islam is a curse. Islam is a curse. And if you don't understand this curse, that is your foolishness. So you better prepare yourself and don't go stay home and say, oh, I don't care if the Muslims now they became in control of my city. Oh, they are now, they are the mayor. Oh, now they are. No, you are in trouble. They will smuggle slowly, slowly, slowly. And then suddenly you will find yourself under their command. And always you will find, which is very weird and funny, that the one who Muslims hate most is the one who support Muslims most. To make you understand, if you go right now and search for LGB, free Palestine, LGB, uh, TQ, whatever they call it, Now it's LGBTQ uh, uh, H, which means Hamas. But those, if they go there, the Muslim will kill them. They will. Let me show you this uh, funny comedy interview. And don't tell me this is not real. I know. We know it's not real. Because I know some smart people there, they will say to me, this is not real. In fact, it's real. Even though it's like a sketch and a comedy. But this is what they do. The West is suffering from foolishness. All right. Hi, everyone. We are live on YouTube with Columbia Yantisemite News. We're Everyone is welcome. LGBTQH. H. Hamas. <laughs> yeah, I totally sim Hamas. Yeah. It's so trending right now. From the, the river, river to, to the sea, sea Palestine, Palestine will, will be free. free. Do you know why it's true? Mm. Because it rhymes. <laughs> Just look at all this toxic Zionist propaganda. Kidnapped in Gaza. Does this look like Gaza to you? Yeah, bro, I have no idea what Gaza looks like. And they're smiling. Do hostages smile? Sinus liars. Totally sus. Do they think we're stupid? Stupid? <coughs> I major in queer postcolonial astrology. Ew. Jews make the world dirty. Yeah. And no, I'm not anti-Semitic. No, he's I'm not. I'm racist fluid. Exactly. And now for a little break from all this activism, we want to say hello to our BFF. Bestie freedom fighter. Abu Fatwa in Gaza. Salam alaikum. Alaikum assalam. And inshallah, Allah will kill you all infidels. Thank you so much for joining us. Love the headpiece, the all oppression chic. Very dread. Mr. Fatwa, how are you? Are you safe? Oh yes, I'm safe. I'm in a tunnel under the Gaza hospital. Oh. Above me, I have Allah and two million civilians protecting me. Community is so important these days. Do you need like humanitarian aid, food, fuel, medicine? It's okay, I have everything. I'm only hungry for rockets. Mm -hmm. As long as it's organic. Yeah. I wish I just could be there with you. You can. You can come to Gaza anytime and we will throw you from the roof, you homosexual dirt. Do you hear? Bro, wanna throw me a rooftop party? They are so welcoming and inclusive. So shukran. And you are also very welcome to come here to America. We will come. First we finish with Israel. 
and America is next. Great! So, I guess we'll see you soon. Yes, it would be a blast. <laughs> Can't wait, it'll be so multicultural. <gasps> yeah, Allah, you are so stupid. Thank you so much, Abu. We love you. I won't even bother killing you. It's a waste <laughs> of bullets. <laughs> Good vibes only. Uh, it's better you just kill yourself. <laughs> okay, bye. Die. <laughs> From, From the, the river, river to, to the sea, sea Palestine, Palestine will be just free. free. Yeah, that sounds better. It is better. <laughs> Even though it's a comedy, but it represents really the stupidity of those people in the West. It's it's this is exactly he they said they, he said to them die, they said to him bye. Die, bye. We will throw you from the roof. Oh, they will throw me a party in the roof. Thank you. Very welcoming, very exclusive. They change the meaning of everything. If it's us, the Christians, who say we will throw them from the top of the reef, the roof, imagine what they would do. As long as a Muslim says that, it's, uh, you know, I mean, those are people, they are uh, under stress. They are under stress. We need to understand. He is uh, so thirsty for rocket, as long as it's organic, no problem. It's our problem, organic, you know. Uh, <laughs> what about the Israeli will build the third temple? You know, I find it very funny. People are really busy about the third temple. I mean, those people, they are not even able to take the temple first. Shouldn't you take the ground first? Don't you see they are afraid even to offend them? They are very much politically correct. As long as you have people who they are politically correct, you will never build a temple and you will never even build a house. Give me a break, Mr. Temple. This is what you are worried about now? You can build a temple when you will have a man, he is a real leader and he is a dictator, not democratic. He say, you know what, this is our temple. You like it, like it. We have 40 to 24 hours to evacuate. You don't, we will evacuate you. But when this man will come, Netanyahu, no. The left, no. What you have now in Israel are a bunch of potatoes. They have a very massive, powerful army, but they don't have any real leader. In order to do that, you have to have a man who is a leader, not a politician. You see, Netanyahu now, he want to seize fire for 50, 50 hostages. If he is, if he have little intelligence, he should accept only if we release either all or none. What 54? What you did, still you have 200. What you have done, I mean, what, is, is that a victory? And did you ask yourself what, what Hamas will win? Why they are desperate to get four days? Which is not a supposed, not a ceasefire, like, you know, a howl. But what does, that, what does that mean? So he did nothing. I mean, they are not real men. They are not real leaders. They are just doing politics. Netanyahu trying to make himself look better after what happened. Okay, I will free 50. But you have 200. He should not allow to free any terrorist unless you free all. Why he accept even 50 for 150? What about we say 150 for 150? Stupid. I support Israel, but I don't support Netanyahu. However, in time of war, if I am an Israeli, I will support him because it's war. In wartime, we have to be united against the enemy. And even after the war, by the way, we should be united, but we should choose a better prime minister. Someone is a smart, strong, and not hypocrite, and not after money. Israel are desperate to sign a peace agreement with Saudi Arabia. In fact, it is the Saudi who they are desperate for it. Why you are in a rush? Already they have a relationship with Saudi Arabia. Already Netanyahu, he met with the crown prince. Already Israeli can fly over the airspace of Saudi Arabia. 
every single airplane going through Emirates or going through India go over Saudi Arabia the airspace of Saudi Arabia opened from a long time ago what this uh, why you are desperate for what they need you you do not need them Emirates need Israel Saudi need Israel Bahrain need Israel because without Israel they are doomed with Iran they don't love Israel they need Israel their bullet is not good enough to fight Iran. They need Israel. So the whole idea of what you see is to build a coalition against Iran. Israel, Saudi Arabia, Emirat, Bahrain, and whoever like to join. As simple as that. This is why, you know, democracy is dangerous. It might be good in some way, but it is bad in other way. Because, you know, you have a... a per, like now in America, we have somebody, his name is a Trump. He go, he flipped the direction 180 degree. Then we have someone, he is Biden. Then he flipped the direction 180 degree. So what happened? We have zero, nothing changed. The guy, he spent four years to build the wall. He, didn't, he could not finish it. Then the guy after him, he came and destroyed the wall. So we are back to zero. Stupidity. Democracy maybe is good. Actually, America is not a democracy, by the way. But, you know, I mean, as a general word, we, we can use it. But in such a system where the direction of politics change 180 degree, those countries is going to be very hard for them to accomplish anything. In Saudi Arabia, they have the same direction, the same system for the last 70, 80 years. So don't go back to zero. Even though, because they are Arab, they are always staying zero. It doesn't matter how much they build. But that not because of a change in direction, but because always their plan go wrong. In Israel, it's the same as America. It's a democratic society election. And because of that, the government is not too much effective. Even decision for war and peace, it's not in the hand of one man. It's very complicated. It's very hard to do it. And after all what happened in Israel, until now, there's many opposing the attack on Gaza. This is how stupid and how many stupid people until now they are living in Israel. In Israel, they have a, a other problem. There's some group, they call themselves Orthodox Jews, those that don't want to serve in the army. Why you don't force them to serve in the army? What about you say the one who will not serve, we will strip him from his civil right. He cannot vote. Don't kick him. He cannot vote. He have no rights to be elected, he cannot be official, he cannot work for government, because simply you don't serve in the army to defend the country. Those who are willing to defend the country is the one who deserve to be getting the benefit of the country. There's many things need to be changed in Israel. Every one of those who call themselves Orthodox Jews have to be forced isn't it a shame that somebody, he claimed that he believed in God, he believed in Yahweh, he believed in the Torah, and then he didn't want to go to war to defend uh, Israel? What is your excuse? Since when that the religious Jews, they don't go to war? Was Musa a religious? So many things need to be changed in the system. But I am not from that country. I cannot tell them what to do. In the top of that, suppose they am an Arab. So that will make it even more funny that I am the one giving them advice how to fix it. Isn't it? Sometime, democracy can be a big problem. bad problem 
it make countries weak. Now, all the enemies of America, they knew what the weakness of America is. When Trump, he lost the election, Erdogan, he sent a letter to Joe Biden a week after saying that all Trump supporters are KKK. A week before, he was kissing the ass of Trump. They knew the weakness. So now we have two parties, they are in enmity, and those Biden is dividing them. He started calling those who support Trump terrorists. Yet he claimed to be the president who unite America. But yet he called more than 70 millions who vote for Trump terrorists, literally. So the Muslims, they took advantage of that. They knew now how we can... Remember we spoke yesterday about divide and conquer? You remember we said to you, we Christians should be united? Your enemies knows how to use your weakness. They are looking for the spot where you are, where it hurt most. This country is very much divided. And that will make this country is very much weak. And this is why Hamas is able to mobilize all those socialists, stupid socialists, to work for them for free. Hamas is not alone. The terrorist of Hamas is working with the massive power of the socialists in Europe, in America, lesbian, gays, LGBT, they are using everybody. And there is a machine behind all of this. And I'm sure the high intelligence in this country, they knew what's going on. Who's behind this? Do you think when all those socialists organized to block the bridges in San Francisco, in Boston, in Houston, in the same day, it happened like just one of them, he said, let's block the bridges? Something big is happening. They are able to mobilize your kids against you. And one of the biggest reason, because we as adult, we are just leaving our kids to schools and schools run by socialists. And the socialists will poison their head that those Palestinians are, their land is taken from them. Those Jews are racist. They build wars in the walls and fences like in South Africa, the white and the black. And they will tell them that the Israeli are, are white and those uh, uh, Gaza people are black and they are African and all the madness and then your child who is a teenage he will believe them you will see a Jew a Jew thousands of Jews in Washington DC striking in the street pro-Palestine Jews so do you see how massive the machine is to the point they were able to mobilize the Jews against the Jews? This is what we are trying to do here so we can warn people about what's going on. But as you see, the big machine is so big, like this guy Morgan, you will notice he is helping to spread the propaganda of those terrorists. Trucker Carson, Morgan, and all the scumbag in the media who they are very famous, and the stupid, many stupid who so-called Christian, they think that those are conservative Christians when the fact they are supporting terrorism. When in fact, they support the enemies. But the second you say Trucker Car, some people they will say, oh, this is the guy. He's the only one say the truth. He's the only one say the truth. 
if there is one truthful thing he said, anyone can remind me of one truthful thing he said, Tucker Carlson? The reason they are the enemy of Russia because Russia is the only Christian country. Now Putin is the only Christian country. Is that because he sent the Muslim army to kill the Christians in Ukraine? Christian country? Is that because they have a web camera business in Russia and women, they are opening their legs in the front of cameras? When the last time you heard that this Christian country is arresting people for porn? Putin is a Christian country, KGB guy. And who is attacking who? So, a person, he is famous. He claimed to be a journalist, but all his journalism is vandalism. He just changed the title. I can change the news by changing the title. Let us say Christian Prince driving his car. He hit a man in the street. I can say a person, his name is etc. He hit a person in the highway. Or I can say a Middle Eastern Arab hit an American, will both news are true? Both news is true. But one title changed the whole idea of what happened. One is just a normal person driving in the highway, he hit other person, which something happened every day. But if you say an Arab Middle Eastern driving his car, he hit an American, now we change the story even though, by the way, he did not lie. He just made a new title. Do you understand? Somebody saying, CP, do you know that uh, Putin, he wanted to join the NATO in the beginning? Okay, let us say that Putin, he wanted to join the NATO and they don't want him. Is that a reason to attack Ukraine? And just to show you that all this excuse is false. Isn't it Putin now so friendly with Erdogan? Isn't it Erdogan is the center of the NATO now? Isn't it America have more than 100 nukes in Turkey? How come Putin is so close to Erdogan and he bring him to uh, uh, to Crimea and he built a big mosque and he invite Erdogan to cut the silk? So how come the NATO is his friend when it's come to Turkey, the NATO is his enemy when it's come to Ukraine? Do we have a brain? Do we? Are you with me? We have a guy, his name is Maz, and saying, CP making money from comments. Uh, Abdul Donkey, son of Muta, as you see in my page in YouTube, I don't have advertising, I don't have support chat, so you are a donkey, again, like your profit, which means I have zero money I make here. You are a certified donkey like your profit. Stop drinking camel urine. Same time you step at Mazin. As long you are saying, I make money from comments, so why you are making comment, you donkey? Are you stupid like your prophet or you are stupid like your prophet? CP making money from comment. Ah, somebody delete the comment. Why you delete the comment? Just wait, I was going to copy it. Oh boy. <laughs> just to show you how stupid you are let us say for the sake of argument I'm making co making money from comment why you are making comment you donkey are you making me rich what your mom she fed you after you came from between her legs
And how we can make money from your comment? Just tell me, please. I want to understand. I take your comment and I exchange it for gas in the gas station. Do you see people giving me money here in the chat and the chat like, I mean, like money like rain? Do you see any dollar showing in the, you know? They try to frame you like, okay, he's taking money. So don't listen to him, guys. He's making money from the comment. Somebody saying, why you cannot criticize Islam without criticizing Hamas? Abdul, you are stupid again. Because Hamas is an Islamic organization. Somebody told you that Hamas is a social club for homosexual. Why Muslims don't have any intelligence? Is Hamas, what is the name of Hamas? Do you know what Hamas mean? Abu Darahim. Why cannot you criticize Hamas without insulting Islam? This is not for a man to do. Oh, it's for you to do, says the Prophet says we will kill the Jews. The Prophet says we want to kill every single Christian. Is your Prophet a man to do? Scooby Doo? Hamas is an Islamic organization. And Hamas, when they recite to kill the Jews, recite what the Quran saying and what your prophet said. They are not communist. So if Hamas is communist, then we will not say anything about Islam because simply they are communist. Why do they want to kill the Jews? Hamas, they speak why? They say because of Prophet Muhammad said. <laughs> Prophet Muhammad said. <laughs> Here we go. What Hamas say? Oh Allah! Bring inhalation to the upon the Jews, Allah. This is their prayer. Do you see? He said our doctrine, our religion is to kill you all. And we will not leave one of you is alive. Any Jew, not Israeli, any Jew. And this guy says to me, why you cannot, uh, you know, criticize Hamas without attacking Islam? Because the problem is Islam. The problem actually is not Hamas. Uh, uh, Abdul Rahim, Abdul Rahim, you sound like a nice guy. Do you like to call me? Do you like to call me and prove to me what you are saying, guys? What do you think? Abdul Rahim saying he is a Muslim. He said Islam teach him to respect other uh, religions. I say this is absolutely false. However, Mr. Abdul Rahim, I will be happy to have your life with me. Do you like to call me? Do you like to call me? And I will listen to you. If you can prove what you say, I will apologize from you in the front of everybody. What do you think? Do you like to call me? What do you think?
This is my Skype account. Let me post it for you. And I will be happy to have you. If you can prove what you said, otherwise I accuse you to be lying. You are trying to deceive us. You notice that we do not know much about the religion. And because I don't speak Arabic, because I'm German, so you said to yourself, okay, he's a German, you know, and those German just drink beer, and they will not notice that when we say takbir, we mean jihad, they think we are talking about beer. So what about you call me and prove me wrong? Or just because I'm from Germany in China, you are taking advantage of my ignorance. Are you going to call me? See, this is what you do. You see somebody here is from Brazil in Germany, you know, if I'm coming from the Amazon River in Indonesia, you say to him, whatever, you know, he don't know what he's talking about. We fool them, we lie to them, and then boom, boom, like, you know, yeah, and uh, Sheikh Osman, he take the wife of his brother, and that's it. Why you don't call me? You can swear to you, just will not, you will not mock Allah or his prophet. I do not know, I, I never mock Allah. Allah mock himself. What, what's wrong with you? Are you afraid? Are you afraid that your God Allah cannot protect himself? I mean, what's wrong with you? See, you are taking advantage because I'm very nice. And you know, like uh, uh, the principal of my school, when I, I was in, uh, you know, teenage last year, he said that you are the most uh, like nice student in the school. He said that to me, you know. Because I was like in the top of him and I have like a knife in my hand. And he said, I swear you are the nicest in the school. You know, and, oh, well, I'm just joking. That's not true. So call me. What's wrong with you? What are you afraid about? What do you mean? Mark Allah, mark, you know. I will not talk. You talk. Call me and tell me how Islam teach you to respect other religion. I want to hear it. Okay, okay, I'm exaggerating. It was not last year when I was teenage. Not it was like a year and six months. Guys, come on, take it easy. I mean, you know, Muhammad he took a donkey, he fly to the seven sky, and nobody saw. I mean, why you go in details too much? Just let it go. Last year, last year. Okay, make it two years. Are you happy now? Even though it's not even two years, I think it was like a year and nine months. Do you like to call me Abu Abdurrahim? Your God will be with you. It doesn't matter who, what you know. Why are you afraid? Don't you don't you trust your God? He will be in your side, and you will explain to them that Islam respect and teach respect to other religion. Can you call me a private? Only I take only I take calls from girls only in private. Sorry, I'm very conservative Muslim. If, uh, only if somebody is like he wanna you know my name is Uthman. So anyone that like, he have a problem with his wife. You give me the number of the wife, I call her, you know, and then, hey, uh, brother, you know, you know what will happen. I don't talk to, I don't like to talk to guys in private. Why well, in private? Don't you want to show the people here the truth? Guys, did you watch the video we did yesterday for Uthman? I took it off, but I'm sure it's in many channels already. Go watch it. Uthman is a wonderful guy, you know, turned to be this guy, he's very helpful in the society. The, his friend, he came to him, he had a problem with his wife, and they are separated, so he gave the, the number of his wife. Uh, Uthman, he took the wife. I mean, how nice this chick is. Hmm. Any Muslim would like to call us? Do you want to join us? Abdul Abdul Rahim, last call. If you don't, just let me know. You know? 
All right. Well, obviously, he, he is afraid to join. But my friend, Mr. Abdul Rahim, you're a prophet. He called the Christians and the Jews and non-Muslims pigs, monkeys, the worst of the creatures, uh, donkeys, uh, people of hell, kuffar, animals, filthy, nudges. And you are telling me that your prophet taught your respect to other religions? Are you serious? Did your prophet call non-Muslims najis? And can you tell the people here what najis mean? So this is what the Muhammadan they do. They go around and they give you speeches. Islam teaches respect. Ah, this is why Hamas, they were saying we will kill every Jew. That is an act of respect. In Islam, we respect you by killing you, by raping your wife. Hmm. All the apologists are adding to it. Oh, people, they are using my videos now in their video. Okay, that's good. Anyway, by the way, I decided to, I learned from Uthman. So I think I'm going to open a clinic, you know, like a shrink, shrink, you know. So somebody like he have a problem with his wife, his night, well, you know, Fatima. I take all, especially if they are young. I, I'm not going to involve, sorry. I don't want to solve a problem between wife and husband if the wife is old. I'm telling you, I have my policy. She has to be beautiful and young and hot. You know, I like spicy food. I mean, ask anyone. I like Chinese food. Not Indian, because that's so, too much spicy. It will kill me, you know. I cannot, uh, like uh, Indian food, I mean, uh, too much. <clears throat> Don't remind me. So, I will open a clinic, you know, uh, like this uh, brother here. Where is his video? Oh, hey, here we go. I mean, uh, beautiful, beautiful, you know. The guy, he have a friend, his name is Othman, and uh, his wife, uh, she is, uh, you know, she, he have a problem with his wife. And, you know, this is what friends for. What friends for? Let us be, let us be honest. Friends is to support each other when they need each other. So this guy, he said to his brother Othman, uh, Othman, I need your help. And the help is coming. Allah, God bless you. May Allah grant you Jannah. Amin, Ya Rab. So... A week ago, almost a week ago, you asked Sheikh Osman how to find a good wife. How, how? So you ask. You go and ask Sheikh Osman how to find a good wife. See, Sheikh Osman, he have many jobs and, you know, he have, he have skills in how finding good wives. That's deep. That is so deep. This guy, he, he have even degree in finding good wife. Okay, you know, what, what Sheikh Othman, he says to you, like, they have to have nice, he nice hips. What about the lips? How, how Sheikh Othman will find you a good wife? What does that mean? I mean, you Muslims who are in burqa, you don't even know what is inside the box. You don't even, even she have a mustache or she have a beard. Okay, what happened? So he asked him how to have a good wife. Ask him two methods to find a good wife. You ask him about dating apps. He said no. And he, you ask what about uh, OnlyFans? He's like, I don't, don't remind me of the fan. You know, I have my cousin. He cheat in the exam. Always he cheat. So when he went in the class before the exam started, he got a good idea. He wrote all the information on the fan, which is in the front of him in the table of the teacher. But at that time, the fan was off. When the teacher get in, he turned the fan on. You know those fan, you put them in the table? And my cousin was moving his head in the same speed of the fan, trying to, to read what he wrote there. Ooh, ooh. So he said to him, only fan? What the heck is that? So they are fan, but yet they want to have sex together? That is a very funny fan sex machine. Only fan, Whew, that's deep. I don't know what his uh, only fan is. Oh, well, man, he don't know those things. He care for halal, only halal. It's totally fine. Yeah. Um, Sheikh Osman doesn't use those methods. He uses a better method. No, no. Exactly, totally different. Oh, okay. That's what fits his 
style. Subhanallah. May Allah. But it's funny. They keep saying Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. I mean, the guy, you are smearing the guy. You are exposing the guy. You are uh, making public speech against the guy. And you are saying Subhanallah. You are religious, brother. You are very religious. Subhanallah. You know, it's like Subhanallah is like the... Uh, uh, you know, like when you do poopoo, you wipe your ass with it. Like, so like all the, uh, all the, excuse my language. I don't want to use the word shit. It's not, it's, it's not forbidden in YouTube. You can't say shit. Did I say shit? I did not. Okay. So like now he, all his shit, and then he wipe it by saying subhanallah. So, so now he is a religious now. He is a good guy. He just said subhanallah. So we go in public and we make a video to expose a guy to, to, to damage his reputation. So everybody will know that he's been exposed. And now at the end you say subhanallah. Smash your Allah. Guide us all. So who you will wait? I'm gonna tell you the <laughs> the process. He is gonna wait for a friend and see if he can help him. For example, um, a brother, which is me, I reached out for him because he's a sheikh to fix our marriage. So what I did is I gave him my wife's number because we have some trouble between I had trouble between me and my wife so I trusted Sheikh Osman I know him and then I was on his table in Balboa Park MashaAllah he's one of the du'at here he went on a cross-country da'wah trip so I gave him her number to fix our marriage right and then after two days my wife she completely blocked me and I know nothing about her. And I told Sheikh Osman, what happened? Why why she doesn't talk to me? She's like, she doesn't want you, that's it. Yeah, don't bother her anymore. I'm like, okay. I was like, okay, well, this is my fate. So um, I got suspicious a little bit. Like, what's going on? So somebody told me that she got married, like after a month of me, of, uh, of our separation. I was like, this is weird. This is not Islamic way. And then she's still my wife. Why she married somebody else? I'm like, this is weird. She's a very private person. She doesn't talk to any guys. Okay. So subhanAllah, I just. She doesn't talk to any guys. Very private. It took her only one month after she left him to be in the bed with somebody else. She's very private. Just look, look how long it took her. I mean, she, because she is so private. Took her 30 days only. Huh. No, no, actually, he said after one month, he heard. After one month, he heard. So we do not know how long it took her to be in the bed of the other guy, you know? But she is very private. Mm. Some research, and I found out that Osman married my wife. Uh, he's doing you a favor. I mean, she is troublemaker. Just say, say, just say, mashallah, man. Come on, say, mashallah. Say, mashallah. Come on. That will solve all the problem. I mean, okay. I mean, you know, obviously, maybe you are not doing good in bed. God knows. I mean, I mean, sorry, Allah knows what you are doing there. You know? Maybe you are like the same Muhammad. She play anthem, nothing working. She play music, nothing working. She does striptease, nothing working. So she said, Uthman, maybe is better. Something there is working. This is Islam. And then after all this scandal, he say, MashaAllah. And then you go to the other guy, he say, MashaAllah too. While under the table, everybody is screwing everybody. But in the top of the table, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Labbil Alameen. Allahman Allahim. Allati of Harim. Boom, boom, Ameen. Ameen. <laughs> So yeah, based on this uh, experience, I am thinking to open a, sh uh, a shrink business for Muslims. Somebody, his wife is young. He and her, they are not liking each other no more. You know what? If Uthman, according to his video, took him two hours to convince her to marry him, I think it's going to take me five minutes. Hmm. Maybe five seconds. Not sure, not sure. The bend. This is religion.
Oh, Lord have mercy. So what happened now? Uthman, he married your wife. Aren't you proud? Be honest with me. I mean, at least she uh, she is married from a, a nice person who do charity. And this is additional proof of his charity in the in the community. You know? I mean, the guy giving semen. For free. Did you pay? No. Did that cost you anything? No. So what, what is your complaint? What is exactly? What is the problem? You ask him for help. He helped you. She's gone. Instead of fixing my marriage... He fixed uh, your marriage. What are you talking about? He fixed it. That is the real fixing. Married her. Still, she's still married to me. Okay, oh, hold on. <sighs> Listen. So, a woman, she is still married to you. You go online and you make a video that there is a guy, he took your wife from you. I mean, what kind of a man you are? You are a hero, my friend. Let us be honest here. You are the man. I mean, look, you have a beard, huh? It, say, it says that you are a man. He is still married to me. I mean, you know, okay. I mean, uh, you are the man. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you said to yourself, I can do nothing. I'm just a potato. And the guy took my eye, you know. So now I'm going to go in line and, uh, you know, do blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay. And then what happened? But then things to get serious. The guy, he forced Uthman. It turned to be Uthman is a potato too. This guy, he called Uthman. He says, listen, you divorce my wife or I will call the police for you. Because you have two wives now. This is against the law. You will stay in jail for some good time. Uthman, right away, he divorced the wife. Immediately. Islamic is still married to me. Subhanallah. May Allah. Subhanallah again. Hmm. All right, anyway. <clears throat> uh, you know, now I know actually why your wife, she left you. Look, you are busy making video for free, Gaza. Isn't this is you? Free Gaza. <laughs> now we know why your wife, she left you. The time you need to spend with your wife, you were busy with Gaza. While you were busy with Gaza, she was busy with Uthman. See what happened to those who support Palestine? They got screwed. Shocking, shocking act. Uh, Uthman is Zani. Assalamu uh. alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Sneeko. MashaAllah, God bless you. May Allah. This guy, suddenly he is uh, connected to Sneeko now. Every video he makes, Sneeko. Sneeko, he became his spiritual father. Assalamu alaikum, Sneeko. I mean, there's a billion people in the internet, but this video is for Sneeko. Who's this Sneeko? He's, I mean, the guy, his name is a shoe. Sneeko is from a sneaker. From all the people in the world, you choose to talk to Mr. Sneaker? Peace be upon him. What do you want to say to Sneaker? Allah grant you. Jannah, I mean, That's it. He's praying for him. You will go to Jannah. I mean, they are a holy community. What are you? Are you kidding me? This is a very holy community. May Allah take you to Jannah, brother. Make your penis endless and your testicle, the right one, is bigger than the left one. So when you walk, always you walk in the right direction because then the right testicle will be heavier and that will force you to go to the right direction. Always you will take the right exit and you will take the right street and you will go to the right bathroom and then you go to the right Gaza and then you will never come back because the IDF is there. Go. So a week ago, almost a week ago, you asked... Are you sure it's a week ago? Are you counting days, aren't you? Sheikh Osman, how to find... He's a Sheikh, isn't he? So you call him Sheikh after he... He just took your wife, you call him Sheikh? What a shaky person you are. And a good wife. Good wife? She's good. Oh. So you ask him two methods to find a good wife. Oh, we, we played this video already. What two methods? I, I, uh, I want more method. 
We don't want uh, the same method. What is that? Let us see this one. Is that a new? If somebody goes to your mother's house, does that mean they're married to you? Thank you, Sheikh Osman. I got permission what? from my husband to try and sell these for my mother-in-law. These. What, 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 what? What's going on here? More scandal. This is a new scandal, guys. Invite your friends, invite your friends. More scandals. A new scandal. This is a new video. Fresh, fresh video. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I will, I will take the job of uh, Tucker Carlson now. Hey, Tucker Carlson, I'm taking your job. We will. Uh, we have a new scandal. Uh, bombshell, bombshell. Bom look, bombshell. I mean, do you see those internet? Bombshell, Trump. Bombshell, Biden. Bombshell. I mean, you think you are listening to the news of Hamas. Everything in the internet have to do with the Trump. Or uh, or Biden or it's a bombshell. I mean, there's bombs everywhere. <laughs> this is a new video. What the heck is that? What's going on? Look, the screen is a black mystery. Guys, aren't you exi excited to see what uh, what is in this video? Who is uh, who is excited? Nobody. Well, I can make you excited. I have many ways to make you excited. Listen, what do you think in this video? The screen is black. Mystery. Sheikh Osman is behind the wife. The gossip and Allah all in one basket. Isn't it so beautiful? It is time for shish kebab. Let us eat. If somebody goes to your mother's house, does that mean they're married to you? What the heck? What, what? If somebody goes to your mother's houses, does that mean they are married to you? Hmm? Thank you, Sheikh Osman. Got permission from my husband to try and sell these for my mother-in-law. These are not my paintings, they're hers, but she wants to sell them and get rid of them. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A lot of craziness happening. I didn't want all of that. But subhanallah. Hold on, hold on. I see a picture there. What is that, a mushroom? Well, this is Uthman. He looked like a mushroom here, I don't know. I, honestly, because I, suddenly the picture came up, like, it looked small. I thought that, like a mushroom, you know. What? Again, subhanallah. And you, can, you cannot make a video without subhanallah. You're making me sick. Your wife is taking subhanallah. The guy is uh, doing boom, 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 uh, subhanallah. The guy is uh, cheating on uh, subhanallah. Okay, subhanallah. Sub subhanallah, how stupid you are. Okay, go. I have rights, and I believe... You have rights? What about your left? What is your right? Even my rights. What? Islam. What, what? Hold on, hold on. You remind me when the police, they come to arrest me. Each time they arrest me, they say, uh, we are going to read for your right. I say, uh, no English. You say, what the heck? And therefore, they can't arrest me because they have to read my right. And I can't read the English. I don't know English, you know. Uh, let us read your right, uh, Mr. Uh, you know. I say, no English. English, no. English, no. And then they let me go because uh, the guy, I mean, you, you know, in America, you cannot arrest somebody who don't speak English. Haram, haram. You know, that Joe Biden will be upset. He must be a refugee. So uh, uh, even when I joined the army in the uh, USA, uh, the drill sergeant, he came to me, he screamed at me, no, 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 no. go down in the mud. After he scream and his head is sweating and his hat is a flying. By the way, his hat looked like a spaceship. Anyway, so his nose gets so close to my nose, screaming in my face. And then I said to him with very, very cold blood, I said, no English. Said, what? What? What happened to this army? They are putting in the army people don't speak English. And you know, he have like his, uh, you know, uh, Texas uh, uh, accent, you know, like cowboy accent. What happened to this country? They are bringing us people don't speak English. 
And then all the left, the rest of the soldiers, they were in the mud for like a half hour, an hour. And I was watching. He said, get out of here. Don't go there. I don't want to see you. So I went away. At night, I was speaking to the guys in the, you know, in the big room. What they call it? I forgot. I was speaking about Islam. And then suddenly the room became so quiet. And nobody is moving, freezing. I felt there is something wrong. You know, I'm the smartest between all the Arab. It was the drill sergeant behind me. He put his hand on my shoulder and he said, No English, huh? No English? Follow me. <laughs> and you know, my friend, what I said when this happened, I said, Subhanallah. <laughs> And I was explaining how filthy Islam is and you know and then the room became so quiet like nobody even moving I told them not to move like not to say anything not to talk and I look at them there is something fishy what happened to those people you know I know he's behind me but it was too late you know I said no English huh? follow me then he took me outside he listen I heard what you are saying I like what you said however Go and make your clothes dirty and make it look like I was punishing you for the last two hours. Come back here after two hours. Be sure, make your face dirty and your clothes dirty. Sir, yes, sir. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> and then I met a guy in the airport with his wife. He was serving with me. He forgot my name, but he remembered one thing. He said, hey, you know English, how you doing? <laughs> His wife, she said to him, what's his name? She said, uh, no, long story, long story, I will tell you later. <laughs> he I don't even remember his name, really, you know, but right away, I know that he is, he must was with me because he said, no, no English. So I said, hey, you know English, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. So you, are you done with the service? <laughs> no English. So brother, can you tell us in English what's going on? Because honestly, I don't understand this gibberish. What uh, she is telling stuff. So now you have a proof that those are your mother stuff, is aren't you? And your wife, the wife of Othman, she is selling them. Got permission from my husband to try and sell these for my mother in law. These are not my paintings, they are hers. Oh, hold she on. There is, a, there is a message here in the top. It says. <laughs> Mother-in-law house, San Diego, Eka Osman mother house. Uh oh. You sell them and get rid of them. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A lot of craziness happening. I didn't want all of that, but Subhanallah, I have rights, and I believe in my rights in Islam. So let's make a summary here. After all the evidences I gave you, you still some there is still some guys that don't believe me. They think I'm tripping or lying. Or I want to put us men down. That's not my intention. I want people to be aware from some claims they are Muslims and follow Islam and ride the wave of Islam. When they get money and fame, they lose the basis of Islam. Oh. I hope I'm wrong. But this is the truth. So let's get to the point here. I have a question to Osman. What is my wife doing at your mother's house? And you know that she's still my wife. Your son told me that the paintings, I'm going to show you in a, in a video, those paintings are your mother's. Okay? So why my wife called your mother my mother-in-law? I will give you options. Your wife, she is calling his mother, his, her mother-in-law, because according to Islamic law, all brothers, Muslims, and uh, you know, the brothers and sisters. I mean, isn't it obvious? Now, about the paint which is going to sell and those owned by the mother of Uthman. Very simple. Muhammad, he attacked the house of Uthman. He took the booty. Because Uthman at that time, he was a Jew. So he took the booty, and now those booty been given to your wife to sell them in the eBay. Here we go. The problem is solved. 
So what the problem? What do you mean? What you, what you, why, why your wife, she is calling Uthman, mother, her mother-in-law? Because she is his mother-in-law. Okay, what is this? Let's get to the point here. I have a question to Uthman. What is my wife doing at your mother's house? And you know that she's still my wife. Your son told me that the paintings, I'm going to show you in a, in a video, those paintings are your mother's. Okay? So why my wife call your mother my mother-in-law? Oh boy. And why she's at your mother's house? That's a okay? great question, by the way. Why? You know, I don't know, seriously. Why a woman she is in my house? And she called my mother, her mother-in-law. Hmm. I need to think about it, you know. I think, guys, uh, sorry, it's it's not easy. We need we need to think honestly. Uh, this is need some music. New information. Breaking the news. Few words to say. Mother-in-law. Wife, painting, house, what my wife doing in your house, very tough question, very easy idiot. I mean, go in there to ask for consulting. He's a sheikh. He will shake hands and other stuff, and then he will get all the answers. Okay. I have a tree, olive tree. And this olive tree, you cannot get any fruit from it unless you shake it. Be careful. Not too much. You might break it. I mean, those are questions are very smart. And the Muslims until now, I think they did not understand what's going on. Brother, subhanAllah, Muslims aren't smart like you. What your wife is doing in the house of Uthman, he's asking the Muslims. Muslims until now, they could not find the answer. Maybe she is taking drive test. I mean, dri drive test, sorry. I mean, you know, you know the thing. Like, you know. Yeah, what the, what what your wife is doing in the house of Uthman? Mother, your son told me that <clears throat> the paintings, I'm going to show you in a, in a video, those paintings are your mother's, okay? So why my wife call your mother my mother-in-law? And why she's at your mother's house, okay? Why? Why? You know that she's my wife and you know me very well why you didn't tell me abu your wife is renting you said she rents there why you didn't tell me abu your wife is renting from from my mother that's what you said why didn't tell me that why are you hiding that and why you lied to me in a message that you told me that your mother lives alone Guys, guys, okay, see guys, I want to, I want to teach you a trick. Do you see this? Do you see this? This message here. Let me read for you this message. This guy supposedly he read, read all. The, okay, why you read the rest of the message? As long as you want to expose the truth. Let us read, guys, together. Hold on. I will take a screenshot. And I will uh, translate for you. I will use uh, my uh, AI uh, software. Mm -hmm. ish, 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 ish. No way. What the heck? Shame on you. I can't believe it. Let, let me hold on. Let me let me hear the message again. Disgusting.
I, I need to call somebody, guys, just from the KGB. Just, just, I will be with you, right, video? What? Wait. I can't believe what's going on. Unacceptable. Answer, it's urgent. With him, print. I told you don't call me. Just oh, don't don't shout, man. It's very urgent. It's so important. I just received a message, a very secretive message, and it was coded. Christian Prince, did you say coded? I assure you, it's very coded. Christian Prince, I don't get coded. Why are you calling me in line? Don't you think that the FBI and the CIA did anything to us? Hey, listen, FBI and CIA cannot listen to you and me. With them, Prince, are you stupid? They are doing to everybody. They cannot. Too bad, Christian Prince. I assure you, they listen to everybody. Zach and Nick, they listen to everybody. But are you a buddy? Christian Prince, you get a point there. Thank you very much. Okay, go ahead and tell me. I don't have nobody. That means they will not listen to me because they listen to everybody. You get a point. Listen, Osman and this man, his name Abu Adnan. Christian Prince, are you making poetry? No. The first one, his name is Uthman. The other guy, his name is Abu Adnan. Christian Prince, I can't believe you. How come both of them have the same name? Idiot. It's not the same name. The first one, his name is Uthman, end with the last letter N. The second one, his name is Abu Adnan. He end with the last letter the same as the name of Uthman. Christian Prince, you get the point. Go ahead. All right. Uthman, he took the wife of Abu Adnan. Gethin Prince, you call me for him in the morning. To tell me that the guy, the, the wife of the guy, the guy. This is very important because a war might erupt between them. Don't you want to make peace? Gethin Prince, this is a piece of that. Don't call me again. I never want warn you. I will call the police for you. Okay, Zakarna, don't call the police, man. I'm just trying to make peace between the Muslims. Let us call them both and lie to each of them because in Islam we are lied to lie to make peace. Ethan Prince, I can call them and I can lie for them, but don't call me. Okay, just go. So, guys, <clears throat> uh, Zakarna is gone now. Oh, boy. Anyone able to read the message here? The coded message? What the heck is this? You erased the message? Let us zoom in. Let us zoom in. Hold on. Okay, this one, it says, really? What the heck? What? Who? You see, we are solving the problem, like, you know? Who? Really? So? R. R. No, this is E-O. Okay, we will need to find what this letter here. Okay. Uh... You really, you really tell. Okay, can you post more messages? And why you are, what about the other coding? Like, what is this? Hold on, what is this? Recording? He is telling him, why you are recording me? Ah, I see the word recording there. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's a war in what's up. What's up? What's up? Let us have war. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, you are very, very, very cute. Very cute. You know, unbelievable. You know, I, I always wanted to be a Muslim. You know, 
Because I heard once a philosopher saying that the only one is happy is the one who is dumb. And look like this is the only way to be happy, to be dumb. Just be a dumb Muslim. So now you are posted. Why you why you are uh, sugarcoating? I mean, why you are sorry uh, uh, erasing those messages? Don't you think people they will say this is suspicious? He is hiding something. Okay. This is my last message to you. Enter you both. Get on call with me. She want to talk to two men in the same time. No, with oh this is I don't know who's calling here. This is a message from who? I don't know who is that that you are talking about why my mother lives alone trying to force the same argument not going to change my answer is it what what is this I mean listen listen you just provided us with the answer we are talking about my mother living alone what are you talking my about ah, ah, ah. so he want to say he's you know this is what he said uh, 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 Shakshuk Uthman he told him he confirmed that his mother she live alone so what Uthman he did according to him he brought the wife of this guy to his the house of his mother so he can do boom boom her okay I mean it's a free rent anyway you know uh, mostly he's paying for the rent of his mother at least he can use the you know the bedroom so okay what happened then what happened the conclusion conclusion what is this seemed like you didn't know that I have a video of my wife saying calling your mother mother-in-law so anybody who <coughs> slandered me may Allah forgive you <laughs> may Allah forgive you again and again and again please guys I told you have patience Islam is about patience <laughs> patience I was wondering what's going on I spent years trying to study this religion and now we discovered that Islam is about patience well, the guy was not patient to take your wife. I mean, she just left you second day she is in his bed. He wasn't patient. But brother, I have to say, you are so patient. I mean, she is there doing boom, boom, and you are, uh, <clears throat> you know, making videos in TikTok. Tick-tock. 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 And look here, the Muslims are giving advices. Look, this is a serious advice. Let me show you the comment. You want to see the comment, guys? Do you like to see the comment or to hear the comment? Tell me. Because as you know here, we care for customer service. Which one is uh, more effective for you? You like to hear it, don't you? I decide to give it to you both. <clears throat> Damon, I hope from Allah, SWT. I'm telling you, we need to use more coding. SWT, what is that? That this is issue will be solved peacefully. I mean, the guy, he is doing boom, boom to his wife. And uh, Okay, no. I feel you, brother. Let us still be patient until he give an answer. <laughs> You know, you know, like this is why I love Amazon. Yeah, 30 days to return the product. Patient, have patient. You know. Abu Adnan, he said, I hope so too. Look at this guy. This guy is a smart Muslim. Couldn't there be better approach to this Akhi, which means my brother? The big anti-Islamic Christian. <laughs> He's talking about me. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> they, 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 the Muslims, they get me wrong. I'm not anti-Islam. What are you talking about? I just uh, friendly criticize uh, the garbage of Muhammad. So, YouTubers are eating this story up. 
and having a field day with it. <laughs> Subhanallah. You, even you, you say Subhanallah? Even you? Everybody look like Subhanallah is a pandemic, you know. Subhanallah, brother, you are much better than a bro. This is will pass. With all the right answer and growth, don't talk about the growth, please. I mean, just stop. For everyone to remain on the straight path, what, what the heck would this comment mean? Did you say anything to him? Nothing. May Allah give you strength. Trust me, this is exactly what he need. If he have the strength, the wife will not leave. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I would be so angry, oh my Allah. But don't, Muslims, why you are saying, oh my God? You change your God name, oh my Allah. Just imagine, guys, you trust that Sheikh with your mari, marital problem. Marital? Mari, mari, maritu, mm -hmm, marital, mm -hmm, maritula, tula, problem. Ma. As, you know, I, by the way, I speak Spanish in case you know. Anyone here is Spanish? Who is a Spanish here from India? Anybody? I'm the only Indian Espanol. Okay. I'm the only senior here. No problem. Let us read this basura. Okay, so, and ask him to call your wife. Hmm. If women left you and she don't want to be with you anymore, you have no right to talk bad about her. What are you doing is not talking bad about Uthman. A, a GM, Abdul Potato, listen. The guy is not talking about his wife. He's just saying Osman took his wife <laughs> and she is still married to him. And you are telling <laughs> he's complaining that the guy claimed to be a sheikh and yet he take a married wife to his bedroom and married, married. <laughs> then more questions coming from the same gentleman. He's so smart. I think this guy, he was working in San Francisco police department. Simple question. You see, I like those uh, simple questions. Like, you know, once I I ask a simple question uh, uh, to a Muslim. If Allah, he have one leg, what is the difference between his walk and the walk of the kangaroo? Until now, I'm waiting for the answer. It was a very simple question. Simple question to you. What you did wrong to her that she left you? That's deep. This guy is a shrink. I need, a, I need to read a drink. It's not polite to gossip. I did not say anything. I mean, this is what you Muslim says. You make a video about it. We watch your video. We comment about the video. Now I'm the one who's gossiping. The, the guy saying his wife in the bedroom of somebody else. I am gossiping now. Guys, this Abdul saying it's not right to gossip. <laughs> Do you know what gossip mean? Gossip mean, I am saying things nobody heard of, I'm making it up. This is the husband himself making a video, posting it online. If he don't want to talk about it, he don't want anyone to talk about it, he will not post it. When you post it for public, it's public. It is public. It is publicity. Okay. Even according to Islam, if she want to be separated from you, you have no right to talk. This donkey, by the way, is donkey because in Islam, no. In Islam, a woman, she can be forced to be taken back to her house, uh, the house of her husband. That is called Baytul Ta, the house of obedience. This guy, he can call the police if, he, if she live in the Middle East, and then they will make a warrant in her name to be arrested immediately. Doesn't matter where she is found. Airport, street, mall, her father's house, it doesn't matter. And then after she will be arrested, she will be cuffed and she will be taken to the house of the husband like a goat. So this guy, he do not know what he's talking about. Toshiro, he says, 
This is why women are one of the biggest trials for men. Oh boy. Oh man. These are private matter. Well, tell your friend if it's a private matter. I mean, it's a private matter. You put it in TikTok. Uh, uh, listen, uh, Abdul, I heard that TikTok is a private app. Hmm. So the guy is posting it in TikTok. He have 26,000 subscribers. And this is a private matter. Why you don't call me? <laughs> you know what? You remind me of a private matter. Let's, let's walk. Uh, you remind me of your prophet. He told the private matter to his wife. And then he put it in the Quran. Which only 1.34 billion they read it. It's a private matter. Hmm? <clears throat> Is that your Quran? <laughs> so it's a private matter. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I will show you an example about how Muslims they have a private matter. Read with me and tell me if it is a private matter in Islam, not to mention what happened between wife and husband. And when the Prophet S.A.W. disclosed a matter of confidence to one of his wives, Hafsa. So when she told it to other wife, Aisha, and Allah made it known to him, Muhammad, he informed a part to Muhammad, and he did not inform a part to Muhammad. So, and then Allah Prophet told his wife, Hafsa, she said to him, how you know this? He said, Allah all knower. <laughs> and by the way, they say to you, who can make Quran like this Quran? I mean, I'm getting dizzy. What? So when Allah Prophet, he told his wife, Hafsa, a secret. Hafsa, she told Aisha, a secret. Allah made Muhammad know about what she told her some of it secret and then she he told Hafsa some of the secret so she told him who told you this secret so he told her Allah all know her uh, Abu Abdul Rahim uh, are you getting dizzy should I call Al Shifa hospital for you in Gaza they have a tunnel underground for this reason they dig the tunnel there because they could not understand what the heck is that? What kind of God he make this? When the prophet told one of his wives a secret and he told her not to tell the others, then the other wife, she told the other wife, and when the other wife, she informed the other wife, and then the prophet, he found out what she told the other wife, Allah told him some of what she said, but he did not tell him the rest of what she said. Then she told him, how you know this? That's so deep. Abu Abdul Rahim, my friend, if I know your secret, I would not share them. I am a respectful man. Abu Abdul Rahim, as long as this is the case, Please call me right now. I will tell you all my secret. Because you are the only one I can tell my secret. You just told me you will not tell anyone. You remind me of my cousin. He said, I want to tell you something, but you promised me not to tell to anyone. I said, okay. He said, you promise? I said, okay. He said, you promise, promise that you, as you will act as if you heard nothing? He said, okay. I promise I will act as if I heard nothing. And then, you know, he told me, can I borrow from you $10,000? I said to him, consider it as if I heard nothing.
Are you going to call me Abu Abdul Rahim? What secret? The guy, your prophet, he put it in the Quran. His wife, she found him in the bed having sex with the maid. The maid, her legs was open like victory sign. Victory to Palestine. Muhammad, he was on the top of her. Going up and down, going up and down. By the way, he was not doing anything wrong. It was just push up, okay? Push up. Not push down. You see, there's a difference. There's push down and push up. His wife, she said to him, in my bed, in my day, you idiot. Then Muhammad said to her, if you don't tell anyone, I promise you, your father will become the caliphate. This is the story. Why you don't call me so we can discuss it? Hold on, the guy with the glasses is calling me. No way. <laughs> answer, answer. Answer, buddy. glasses off so you can see the bomb to click on it oh boy <clears throat> I will try one more time <clears throat> somebody else oh he changed his he changed his picture no this is him did he say he is at work now oh listen listen you want to debate face to face <laughs> Trust me, you will be afraid even to debate me ass to ass. <laughs> you are making people even over Skype. What, what will happen to you if you see me? I get scared when I see myself, myself, you know? Just, you know, just go. Go, just go. <clears throat> so, Abdul, don't complain, my friend. Your brother, he himself, is posting his problems online. He's inviting everybody to help. We're trying to help. Why are you being negative? What's wrong with you? Don't you notice we are trying to help to see what the problem? Don't you know I have a degree from the S S U S S N O H E of A O R M University, and my specialty to fix the problems between wife and husband. And this is why Allah Himself He sent two angels from heaven. Their name is Harut and Marut. Guys, why why does divorce happen? We know it is Harut and Marut. Do you remember? In the stupid Quran, Allah He sent two angels. One his name is Harut, and the other one his name is Marut. Hmm? And Harut and Marut, they opened a Harry Potter school in the Babylon Tower, which makes sense. You watch the, the, the tower and the Lord of the Ring, the, the Lord of the Ring, Ring of the Lord. I mean, English is funny. You know, in Arabic, we, we say like, you know, we say, uh, like in English, you say beautiful house. In Arabic, we say a house beautiful. Honestly, in Arabic, is a like different direction. Lord of the Ring. Oh. Okay. But who is the Lord of Harut and Marut? So Allah, He sent two angels specifically to earth to teach magic. And the purpose of this magic is what? Is to make the wife and the husband fight. 
Who is here? He is fighting lately with his wife. Be honest with me. Give me one. Give me one. I will start with myself. Even though I'm not married, just to encourage you, you know. Here we go. Don't be ashamed. It's okay. I mean, you fight with your wife, so what? You know, if you have, uh, by the way, if you want to buy bandage, I have some for you. <laughs> I mean, you know, woman, those high heels are something dangerous, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you go to visit your friend, he opened the door for you. He have a bandage over his eye, over his forehead, over his head. What happened to you? He said, nothing, nothing. I, I fell in the, uh, in the driveway. Yeah, you really? In the driveway? And uh, why the driveway have number 10 in it? The size of your wife's shoes. You know, she have a big shoes, you know. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So if you have a fight with your wife, thank you, thank you for all those, uh, uh, the one who fight with his wife. I appreciate your fight. Honestly, I'm a lawyer. We need customers. Call me. My specialty is divorce. <laughs> you know, once I was in McDonald's and there was a birthday party. And the guy was giving cards, you know, like they reserve a part of, uh, of McDonald's. He, the guy here is a photographer giving uh, cards. So I said, what is? He said, uh, oh, this is if you have like a wedding, uh, you know, a baptism, uh, uh, engagement, uh, you can call me. I am a photographer. I said, do you do? He said, we do baptism. We do. I said, what do you do? He said, wedding, baptism, uh, engagement, uh, uh, graduation. I said, do you do? Uh, did you divorce? <laughs> <laughs> you should see his face. He said, what? He said, you don't do divorce? He said, no, no, sir, we don't. Uh, he was looking like what? And I look serious. You know, I'm serious. I said, well, I mean, you take pictures from for people when they get married. But divorce is a lot harder. Shouldn't you take a picture and have party too? <laughs> anyway, so now, <clears throat> Harut and Marut, sent by Allah, police be upon him. I mean, IDF. And Harut and Marut, they teach people magic. And they are angels. But remember, before they teach you magic, they make you sign a disclaimer. What the disclaimer do? They teach you magic about how to cause separation between a man and his wife. Here, Allah, just a question. If your angel is the one who caused separation between a wife and the man, who caused separation between two gays? Hmm. There is something you did not tell us? Only anyway. But then the angels, after they teach you how to make separation between the wife and the husband by magic, they will tell you that you should not do it. It's a trial. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. I mean, when you join, a, you know, when you join a, uh, like uh, any uh, school or anything, you have to sign a contract disclaimer, you know, like etc. So Allah, he made a disclaimer. We will teach you magic to separate the wife and the husband from each other by making them fight and hate each other. But disclaimer, any learn that which harm them and profit them not. Look, look at the decent Allah. So he opened a school to cause divorce and then he tell you after you graduate, <laughs> don't do it. What the heck is that? So why you taught them how to do it? Like what? Guys, why you are laughing? Are you laughing at me or laughing at the Quran? If you are laughing at me, I have a warning for you. I know a person, he made fun of me. Second day he woke up in the morning, he looked like me. Literally. You know, he got scared. He called me. He said, uh, uh, I am you. I said, you stupid. What are you talking about? He said, I swear by Allah, I am you. <laughs> I said, you are what? I am you. I made fun of you today. I became you. I said, that's even better. Two of me, better than one. The earth, it, this is the sign of the end of the time. <laughs> anyway, anyway. You know, forget about me, you know, like laughing at me or laughing at the Quran. It doesn't matter, really. What is important is your health and to be laughing. You know, anyway, you will wash dishes after five minutes because your wife, she will say, hey, it's Thanksgiving, you idiot. Come to the kitchen. 
Anyway. <coughs> anyway, so Allah, he opened a school of Harry Potter to separate between the wife and the husband. Now we go to our friend story. You see, we forgot about even the original story, Basim, but we are done with it. We expose him. So this guy now, obviously, he don't understand that whatever happened between him and his wife, it was because of Harut and Marut and the school of magic of Allah. Anyone here can prove me wrong? Christian Prince, you crossed the line. I ancestor from you. Bram, bam bang, do me a favor and close the door behind you. I unsubscribe as if I care. Abdul, listen carefully. I go live on air if I have one subscriber or if I have 160,000 or 200,000. You are a stupid fool. Just to let you know, when I came in YouTube, I have one subscriber. <laughs> Still, I go on YouTube. <laughs> And by the way, the WhatsApp subscriber was only me. I uh, make another account, I subscribe to myself, and then I talk, and I chat with myself. I ask myself questions, I answer them, you know, immediately, and very fast, you know? And I even I debate with myself. Like I say, like, you know, I will get you busted. So do you think you, potato, fried potato, you are telling me you crossed the line, which line? Do you think when Muhammad, he went to his own son, wife, and the wife was alone, and he flirted with the married wife to his son, he crossed the line? Or you don't care? You must have a line since when? Is that the line of Berlif? The Jews, they break it. Hmm. So, yeah, I just forget about him. I'm so glad that he... Man, I, I, I felt like there is something in my shoulder. Thank you for unsubscribing, man. You, you were heavy. Uh, I'm not talking about me. This is Muhammad. Do you know that your prophet Muhammad, he been rode by a bunch of African one day and one night all day long? And they are tall African and they were naked. They rode your prophet. I can show you the hadith. You cross the line, you are talking about line. You Muslims, you have sex with the children and you talk about cross the line. Rape children and you talk about cross the line. You burn people alive and you are talking about cross the line. Hmm. Say that to your wife. So, he is being patient and he is telling us about what's going on. <laughs> and inshallah, you'll get whatever you want. Just have patience. I waited one year, one year. To find out the truth i knew osman married my wife i knew it i have such suspicious but i couldn't say anything till i make sure that he's the one one year it took me one year subhanallah yeah uh, just a question all what you need to do you go in the front of the house of Osman and see who's coming out and coming in why it took you one year the one year? Hmm. Like the previous videos, I showed a couple of things. That my wife is describing Osman by his age, his first wife age, and there's very private stuff too. I cannot show it on public too. Okay? It's very extremely weird things. That is getting weird. Very private things too. Like what? Are you serious? Are you talking about private things like this is how we do it? Or like this is how we do it? But it's okay. I'm not going to mention it. No way. Thank and you. Thank you. You have four kids. And you are Pakistani. Oops. So you will not mention it because he has four kids and he's Pakistani? Ah, you will mention it if he's from Bangladesh. But if from Pakistan, no. Oh, okay. Your wife is Pakistani. She's an. Pakistani marrying Pakistani. Their child will be Pakistanis. Like me. If I'm an Arab, I'm an Arab. I marry an Arab.
my child will be Arabanis. That's but how come you Muslims that uh, Ishmael, his mother is Egyptian, his father is from Iraq, Aramaic, his son is an Arab. <coughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> I mean, he married Egyptian. Ishmael, he married an Egyptian. His mother is an Egyptian. His father is an Aramaic. His son is Muhammad. Yeah. Really? True story. In the late uh, 30s, you have no siblings from your mother as like as brothers. Okay. And why she's saying that her husband is has a master in hadith. Uh she maybe she's talking about Christian Prince. <laughs> oh boy. And why she's hiding the fact that she's married? Well, she's not. Uh, she's not hiding that she's married, but she's hiding who is she married to. If a woman is proud of who she with, she will be proud of him, not hide it. Are you saying she isn't proud of uh, being with Uthman? That's a lot of stress to hide her husband. Why you have to hide your husband? That's very normal. Any woman she is married to you too, she will hide you. I mean, look at you. You're dumb. You are like a mule bragging about a guy taking your wife. So everybody will laugh at you. Why you go online and talk about it? What about you? Shut it up. So people will not laugh at you. And you look like a stupid idiot. Uh, what you get from this now? You will get the wife? Hey, Muslim, just tell the guy, Christian Prince, he advised you. Just shut up, man. What, what is this for? You want to expose that man? You waited a year? A year. What about you wait two years? Ten years? There's something weird in there, right? <clears throat> Why she choose San Diego? She does oh boy. Why she choose San Diego? Aren't you in San Diego? She doesn't know how to work. That doesn't I mean she she doesn't work, she doesn't make enough money to live in California. Okay? And she's from North Carolina. And you know, in North Carolina, they don't make enough money to support to support living in California. So she couldn't rent in California because it's expensive, right? So if she ah, so she moved. Mm. Uh -huh. Is renting at your mother's house as what you claimed? Can you show us the receipts? I know my wife, she doesn't she doesn't pay cash at all. She always use either her credit card or checks. Can you show us any receipt? Shame on you. You use the Jewish credit card? Visa and MasterCard? Hey Muslims, how many times I told you you need to be caught Israel? Free Palestine, you idiot. So you make a video about Gaza and then you use a credit card? Idiot. Of the renting. And why she traveled <coughs> from San Diego to North Carolina, like when she, everything popped out, right? Another thing, why she chose your mother's house? United States is extremely big. She's chose San Diego and your mother's house. Subhanallah. I have rights on you. I have rights on you. And why your friends are threatening me? It's like, I know you. If you come to San Diego, we're going to take care of you. Or you're not welcomed in San Diego. Is that a real Muslim? Why are you sending those people on me? You're trying to scare me? I'm a Muslim. I fear nobody but God. You Muslim don't fear anybody? So why you don't call me? You Muslim fear nobody? So why all of you, you go and you seek asylum in Europe, claiming that you fear death in your country? Suddenly you fear nobody? You don't? Are you sure? That's true story. So why when the IDF, they come to you in Gaza, you go in the tunnel? Is that because you fear nobody? Hmm.
We Muslim, we fear nobody. True story. That's why you ask the American to protect you in Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait, in Bahrain, in Qatar, you name it. Because you fear nobody. You are fearless, brother. You are fearless. And I wish I was wrong about you. I wish, wallahi. I wish I was wrong about you. Wish, wish. Ya Allah. Subhanallah. Again, subhanallah. I mean, the guy screwed you up, man. You keep saying subhanallah. So again, what is my wife doing in your mother's house? Oh, this is the same question. A oh, serious question. Okay. What about we ask, what is Hamas doing in your mother house? This is the drama now. We will spend the whole day what my wife doing in your mother house. Eating falafel. Here we go. We will give you an answer. What's wrong with you? The same guy, he go change his name and he come back. Christian Prince, you are being unfair here. <laughs> change your name, come back. I thought you unsubscribe already. The compound we underneath the ground. We are approximately between the Qatarian building is above us. And this is the way to the street. Meaning this is a way that goes out outside from the hospital. We are talking about a tunnel, which is more than this. Only this <coughs> specific area is more than 300 meters of a tunnel. So this area goes directly outside of the hospital, approximately to one of the areas outside, maybe a mosque, maybe an apartment. It's blocked. It's blocked and sealed. They knew that we were going to come here more than a month ago and they sealed it. And now we're going to see the infrastructure of the tunnel. This tunnel is a, is a complex tunnel. It's not, a, it's not the ones that we know. It's more convenient for a long living, like you have toilets and you have rooms. Rooms that were built in order to contain people. But this room is an operational room that had communication with electricity provided from the sources of the hospital, meaning the hospital is providing electricity. This room was evacuated, all the gear was evacuated. I guess it was evacuated when they, when they knew or understand that we're going to enter into Shifa Hospital. You can see how long it is. The warriors in front of us are going inside the tunnel. You can see a small kitchen. So it will provide them food, water, etc. All these facilities of water and food are coming from the hospital, meaning they're using the hospital infrastructures. They're using the hospital infrastructures in order to provide this terror mechanism to stay alive and survive. I want to show you more rooms, more rooms. This is a room yeah, where you can sleep. Look how big the rooms look. They command control it also has an air conditioning. Air conditioning too? Air conditioning goes Do you see the air conditioning in the, the tunnel? Hospital. From the hospital. One of the reasons that allows us to understand this complex is we found the engine or the air conditioning, of course, outside next to the Qatari. Uh, compound inside the hospital, electricity, full electricity. The gear that was inside here was evacuated before we entered. But look at the ceiling. This is not just a, it's not just a regular tunnel. This is a high facility compound. Also, more toilets here. A lot of toilets, man. They were preparing for the Israeli attack because they will piss a lot. See, they, they, they dump a lot of, uh, this is because of explosions. So
so some of the tunnel is is exposed already to the sun. They try to seal the they try to seal it also with with uh, sand they, they put sands. and other components that we will not be able to <coughs> enter here. We evacuated the sand. We open up those uh, entrance so we can go in, but they trying to ruin uh, this tunnel in order for us not to not to be able to enter. You can see the stairs here going down. Electricity from all over the sides are electricity. Look how big, see? All this electricity compound, of course, all this electricity gear, of course, comes out from the hospital. The hospital provides, in that sense, electricity to this terror mechanism of the tunnel. This is a unique signature of the arches. The arches are a unique technique by Hamas, building the tunnels. It's something that was... Uh, uh, designed in the last... Uh, I, I see Andrew in the text, he's saying, Hamas bombed the hospital, not IDF. In fact, neither Hamas, neither IDF bombed the hospital. The hospital is there. They lie. Nobody bombed the hospital. It was a big fat lie. The explosion happened in the parking lot. Have nothing to do with the hospital and far away from this hospital. <laughs> What is how they bombed the hospital and now just yesterday they evacuated the hospital? I mean, what the Israeli are using like firework to bomb the hospital so they destroy one room? Either we say they bombed the hospital, the hospital is destroyed, or not. Israeli, when they bomb a place, the whole place will collapse in a second. The hospital is there. Actually, they got down from there, from the hospital. And not only that, did you see the videotape they got from the hospital? So they have the they have still the videotapes, the cameras, everything is working. The electricity. Fifteen years. This unique mech every every area that we see arches are. Uh, we understand that it assembled that it has a tunnel <coughs> next to it. This is how we revealed some of the tunnels. So it's a unique structure of Hamas tunnels in the last 15 years. You see, this is why you should not wear, you should not watch intelligence like an in intelligence tape from the intelligence department of the army with women. Tracy, she is saying, move the clip. He have a scary eyes. Oh boy. This is why we should keep only in the CIA and FBI men only. <laughs> women, they will be watching. You have a scary eyes. Don't want to watch this video. You have a scary eyes, man. I mean, go on. So why are you looking at his eyes? Look at the tunnel, the tunnel, the tunnel, Tracy. Focus on the tunnel. The video is about his, the tunnel, not about his eyes. Oh boy. His eyes. The, the warriors, it took time to make sure that this area is not booby trapped. We were ready that uh, we were worried <coughs> that it was booby trapped. Uh, cleaning this area, opening it so we can go yeah. inside, was a huge task for the forces of the special units that were here. See, they block the other side, they put sands. It goes directly to the street. 
meaning it again goes out from the hospital to the north side of the hospital where we found another tunnel another tunnel which has a which has an elevator like the Rantisi tunnel and it goes up and goes out so it's all a tunnel systems that ends in the hospital it's a mechanism of a tunnel system that ends in the hospital now we're going to turn left and go out again in the hospital just to see the size of the tunnel Look at this. This is the blast. This is the this is the blast door, the one that we opened, where we have seen, it, have seen in the movie that we reached to the blast door. We took a time to open it. We were making sure it's not booby trapped. This blast doors allows them to prevent blasts by our air force, meaning it can maintain the preservation of parts of the tunnel to be protected and also it's uh... so is it true when the israeli army said from the beginning of the war that under a shifa hospital there is a command office of hamas guys did they lie by the way they brought many journalists inside the tunnel already many tv stations already I'm playing just the, the IDF uh, uh, recording so nobody can come and say this is a copyright thing. Uh, but already many stations, even uh, uh, FP, Reuters, uh, CNN, many stations, they've been there already to record and, you know, they have their TV team. They went inside the tunnel, the tunnel they, check, they check to be true. Is it true? Is it really in the hospital or it's in a different place? So when they said that they are using the hospitals for terrorism they were not lying it's true in fact if i am them i should send the commanders from that time to the hospital area to free the hostages as long as we are sure that the you know the hostages is here we should not wait Obviously, all the hospitals are used by Hamas because there is the place where always electricity will be, food will be. They do not even need to cook food. Remember, the hospital have kitchen. They have supply. They have gas. They have a fuel. They have internet. They have everything. And based on in, in the international law, you cannot attack a hospital. It's a forbidden area. So Hamas using hospitals as a very safe, secure location where the enemy can maybe will bomb every inch of Gaza. All what they need to do to be under the hospital and they will be protected. Do we have any Mohammedan here? Want to argue? This is why when we say Israel is right and those cowards are the one who is hiding, using a human being as a human shield. When this guy in his video, he claimed that it is Israel using a human shield. It is the opposite. It is the Muslims who attack. It is the Muslims who kidnap babies and women and children to use them as a human shield. It is the Muslim who, you know, make their tunnels and their houses and schools even even like we saw videos of them using schools, not only under the schools. We play it here in this channel, you, if you remember. For this is for Israel to annex Gaza and to kill as many son of bitches as possible to make sure that this will never happen again. Filthy coward. And anyone, anyone who call for a ceasefire will be a terrorist sympathizer. So God forbid, I don't want to be labeled as a terrorist sympathizer. So I agree with Ben Shapiro. I think we should kill as many son of bitches as possible. Well, let me, so okay. far, but Basa, three, let me, uh, three, no, no, so, 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 so far, 3,500 people were killed. Three, you know, so far, so far, he count only, you see, he count only the Muslims. He don't count the Jews. You see, when they kill the Jews, do you notice? He count only from Gaza, the Jews who died by his people, 
they are not to be counted. Not even a single one he count. This is why I don't like this stupid host. You shouldn't say, shouldn't say to him, okay, what, what, who is the one attack who? Who is the one lunch the attack? Who is the one who kidnapped people? Who is the one took babies? Who is the one took women? And you know, this house is sitting like in a... I mean, this is, what a dumb, what an idiot. You are the TV host. When people, they told me to make a video about this, I said, I don't watch them, those things. I know they are a bunch of liars and, you know, those are not, uh, you know, they are not even serious. You cannot take them serious. I know they're a quality. Garbage. Should you get him busted right away? At least bring somebody, he can refute what he said. And even when they choose somebody today in their program, the first question you ask yourself, how much knowledge they have about the issue and what they are going to give us, what they, what they will add to what's happening. So what we heard from this now until now, he's just condemning Israel. You know, any person, he have a dignity of little righteousness, he will say the negative and the positive about himself, correct? Because there's no way everything about you is positive. The same I speak about the Israeli government, how stupid they are and how many stupid things they did. So how come you notice and you remember and you are good in counting numbers about how many of Gaza died, but you do not remember one person of the Jews who being killed just because they are Jews and how many they were kidnapped and yet you are talking about the human shit. And this guy is sitting like a donkey in the front of him. So what this guy, Morgan, he bring? A false man, hypocrite liar, give him the stage so he can false fabricate, manipulate, fool as many as he can. This is what they are doing. And their show, by the way, all what they care for is about how many of you that will bring. So I will bring somebody, he say all the stupid things, and that will bring more people to talk about it. Imagine if I am the one who is the TV host. Do you think this guy, Potato, Basim, he would dare even to be there? Do you think any of them would dare to be there? No, this Morgan is the same as a Carson. All, all, all of it is money. Do you know how much money those people, they make from those programs? You see, we are here for free. We don't get paid from YouTube, right? But those people, they sign contract with big company. Huge money. Ramble pay them. Uh, what It's called Daily Wire. You know, like this woman, her name, what, uh, Candanus? What her name, Candanus? I saw a guy, I never heard of him. I saw like he have 20,000 people watching him live. I don't know, is he? And he was talking about that Daily Wire, they are paying her $30 million. 30. Do you see how much they serve you? Thirty. This is a big, big business. And the more they can bring people to watch their program, the more money they make, and the more publicity, and the more uh, the contract will get uh, will get hired. No, no, no. I'm not talking about the Egyptian guy. I'm talking about this. Uh, idiot Morgan the Egyptian guy don't don't get any money from being here it is the one who owned the show he will get the money
all of them are garbage. And you know, all of them, the uh, Jordan Patterson get 200K a month from them too. Well, I don't know. In my case, I will not even pay uh, uh, Jordan Patterson even a penny. I mean, this guy, you think he is almost going to sleep and he is confused and he himself need a doctor. You know? He himself need the doctor. I mean, all of them, you know, look, all of them, they are really struggling even to think and use their brain. Do you remember when, uh, uh, when Mimi Hijab, he brought, uh, uh, he have uh, Jordan? Jordan looked like a fool. It looked like he was taking drugs, you know? Very weird. I don't know, for me, I see them all weird and stupid. And if there is one person is a smart, he will not be known. They will bury him. You have to be stupid to be famous. You have to be stupid to be supported. You know, each time my channel like have 70, 80,000, I lose it. Did you ask yourself why I keep deleting my videos? I delete them. Like I just made a video yesterday, I, I took it off. Because YouTube is all over me. If I am like them, I will have millions of subscribers by now and I will be making a lot of money from it. Just go by their game. Just be hypocrite. Just be politically correct. Just don't say it as it is. And then you are fine. Thank you for supporting Jewish uh, community and standing with Israel. Myself, I am not always pro-Israeli government, but always pro-state of Israel. Thank you, my friend. I am not really. You see, I don't support because you are or not, I, I support what is right. So this is the land, is the land of the Jews. As simple as that. If it's not their land, I would say it's not. I'm not taking side. This is the land of the Jews. The book of the Muslims says this is their land. The book of the Christians says this is their land. The book of the, of the Jews says their land. So what the problem? The problem is there's a scumbag, his name is Muhammad, he taught hate against the Jews. And since then, the Muslims, they cannot live in peace with anyone. They want to kill everybody. And everybody avoiding to speak about the problem. They keep talking about Hamas when the whole issue is not Hamas. Is somebody living in Pakistan is Hamas? No. Somebody living in Iraq is Hamas. Even the Shia, they want to kill the Jews. Somebody living in Iran, he said death to Israel. So what the problem? The problem is, 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 is Islam. Why somebody live in China don't scream death to Israel? Unless he's a Muslim. The second he is a Chinese Muslim, he will say death to Israel. So what the problem? The problem is religion. And nobody dare to say what is the problem. What do you think about a, a, a son of Hamas, Musab? He just made a speech in the UN. What do you think about his speech? I did not. I don't. I don't watch really those things, but I know what he will say. But anyone will listen? No, they will not listen to him. They will not, because at the end of the day, it is about money. It's about deals. It's not about what is right and what is wrong. You see here, we are talking like, you know, like family, friends, etc. So we speak in a, in a comfortable way and we say that what, what we believe is right. For those who they are in the offices, the mafia, those, they don't care for what is right and what is ethical and what ethical. They don't care even for bloodshed and killing who died. No, they care for the deals, the money, how much we will make from the oil, what we will get from agreement. If I now vote against Israel, what I will win and what I will lose. 
who is going to elect me next time if I vote against Israel? And how many they will elect me if I vote for Israel? They calculate their numbers. They find that there's 57 Muslim countries and there is one country is called Israel. So the head of the United Nations, he vote against Israel because there's 57 countries will vote for him to be, uh, to be the, the head of the United Nations again. It's a business. It's not about what is right or what's wrong. When Putin, he support Hamas, this guy, he killed them. He killed them in Syria, the same Hamas. So why he support Hamas? Because he's upset. He's upset from the American. He's upset from the Israeli. They are supporting his enemy, the Ukrainian. It's just exchange of fire. Otherwise, what he have to do with Hamas? The guy, he killed thousands of them in Syria. So what do you see in the world? Even when Biden, he say he support with Israel, do you think he care for Israel? Anyone really here think that Biden, he care for Israel? He don't. He care for his coming election. So if he say I am against Israel, it's because he think it's better for his election. If he say I am with Israel, it is because he think it's for his election. Do you see all of those who go in the stand and we say we stand with Israel from Democrat and Republican? The only one who is saying that he stand with Israel is the one who is conservative and he understand very well that this is the land of Israel and this is their right. But I assure you, most of them, they don't care. It's just about election. If the majority of the American, they are anti-Israel, all of those you see them in the stage saying, we support Israel, they will say the opposite. They will flip overnight. Because simply, all what they care for is how to be re-elected or how to be in the office and how to make more money. Trump, Trump, he want to sign peace agreement for Israel. He brought Qatar, he brought, I saw, hold on, Emirat and Bahrain. But then Trump himself, he protected Qatar. Qatar is the head of the snake. Is that correct? Is Qatar the head of the snake? How many times we heard the name of Qatar? Even now when they want to have a deal to release the terrorist, the terrorists to introduce the hostages is Qatar. Qatar everywhere. So Trump, he go in front of the White House, he say, Qatar have to stop supporting terrorism. Okay. A few weeks after, Qatar rent a building from his son-in-law for $1 billion. Suddenly Qatar, is a friendly country. <laughs> I mean, the guy, he went in the front of the White House and Qatar have to stop and they are funding terrorism. What happened? Money. Even the one who you think he is for Israel. In fact, he is just for his pocket. So when he support Israel, he just supporting so that he can be elected. Even when he speak about being conservative, he is not. Isn't it obvious? This guy just after women, you know, he is not conservative. He just say what, what the crowd like to hear. The group who vote for him. As simple as that. Do you like guns? Okay, we will keep your guns. You are Christians? Okay, I will hold the Bible. Historic trip to Europe and the Middle East. I addressed a summit of more than 50 Arab and Muslim leaders, a unique meeting in the history of nations, where key players in the region agreed to stop supporting terrorism, whether it be financial, 
military, or even moral support. The nation of Qatar, unfortunately, has historically been a funder of terrorism at a very high level. And in the wake of that conference... Did he say anything? Did he say in a very high level? Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Qatar is funding terrorists in a very high level, which means, what does that mean? The prince himself, the ruler. And then he became their best friend. But why Trump, he attacked Qatar in this speech? Because the Saudi, they gave him money and they asked him to go against Qatar. He is their dog. Then the Qatari, they offer more money. <laughs> You see, he said, I just came from meeting from Muslim leaders. He met with the Saudi. The Saudi, they hate the Prince of Qatar. He is supporting Hamas. He is supporting Muslim Brotherhood. He is, he is, he is. Do something. He go in front of TV. Hamas, Qatar have to stop supporting terrorism. Qatar, they got it. They went to Washington DC. They met with his son, his son almost bankrupt, son-in-law. They rented his building for $1 billion. Did you ask yourself why until now the FBI and the Department of Justice did not question his son-in-law about such a deal? Isn't it obvious? $1 billion rent from Qatar? So a foreign government rented the building from an official. He is a private consultant to the president. And you know, here you ask yourself, why even he is, who is he to be private consultant to the president? Who, I mean, who is this guy? Like, do he have a degrees in political science? Maybe he is a, a lawyer, he study international law, or who is this guy? He doesn't even talk. And the daughter of Trump, who is a Barbie, she do fashion and she sell purses and shoes. Suddenly she became a private consultant to the president. I mean, those are people hire about decision for a nuclear war, for something serious. Those are the private consultant for a president. And then Qatar go and rent from Trump, son-in-law, a building, and they pay the rent in advance for the coming 99 years. So all of them, they are lying. Don't think they support Israel. Nobody, they don't support Israel. They support themselves. They listen to the crowd. If Biden, he notice that the majority of the American, they are against Israel, trust me, he will send arms to Hamas. All what they care for who is the one who will make them win? As simple as that. But people think that those are trustworthy and they are good. Like if, if now I like I speak negative about Trump, many will be upset. Many, they will be upset, very upset. But this is the truth. They don't care really about you. They don't care about Israel. So all those who see the work in politics, you look at them as a Christian in a very, let us say, you know, like in a classical way, like you are a Christian, they stand for uh, conservative value, uh, they are against, uh, you know, uh, the woke uh, culture, etc. And uh, because of that, we vote for them. Okay, good. But how many of them really are really conservative? This is why it's very important to check the list. How many times they vote conservative? How many times they did not vote conservative? How many times they absence from vote against something not conservative? Because when you don't vote against it, it's the same as you vote for it. You know what I mean?
So when they say they want to uh, legalize marriage for homosexual, and then you claim that you are a congressman voted by Christian groups, and you claim that you are conservative, and then during the day of vote, you, absent, you are absent. What does that mean? But this is the day we need you. So when he is absent, in fact, his absent is to make it happen. In the same time, he make himself like, I wasn't there, I did not vote for it. Go, go check the name. I did not vote for it. But the fact he voted for it, that's why he was absent. He did not join the vote to say yes, so he will not have a mark in his name that he did vote for it. So they get absent. I will never work in politics because I will be uh, I will be kicked second day. <laughs> Imagine me in the Congress. <laughs> The first speech, I will say to them, all of you are a bunch of potatoes, liar and, 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 and hypocrites. <laughs> and then they will vote against you. They will say he value the valid like uh, 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 he did something unethical. You know, they will censor you. They can kick you out. They will vote against you. They will kick you out even if you are elected. The first day, you will not even survive the second day. You have to be part of the gang to survive the survive the gang. You cannot be the priest between between the drug dealers. <clears throat> yeah. Even though I know if I go and make a speech, a lot of people they will like you know like me to know about me. But they will not let you go. They will not. They will not let you stay. They will not even. You will not even be able to be in that day where you can uh, uh, say, "I want to go for election." They will smear you. They will frame you. They will say, "Look what he say. He speak. He's Islamophobic. He's a etc." You know. Yeah. Anyway, I don't want to be in such a place because. Uh, when you work for government. You are not afraid. You are not afraid. If you have money, they they have the right to check where you got your money. They can frame you. They can say, "Oh, where he where he got his car from? Where he uh, bought his house? How he made this money?" Uh, we have subpoena for his phone. The second you became an official, you need to be ready for all the garbage they have. Like now, Trump. He become a president. I mean, how higher you can be. I mean, the guy, they are taking him from court to court to court to court. And all of us, we knew, regardless if he is good or bad, all of this garbage is just because they don't want him to be the president. They are afraid he will go for election. We know it. And here you understand that the system is not good. Democrats are terrorists like Muhammad. They are trying to ter terrify the guy. If you don't withdraw from the election, we will put you in jail. Terrorism is just a form of terrorism. All the problems Biden he have, Hunter he have, there's no problem. January 6 is the big problem. The guy, he took a mortgage, he paid the mortgage, he did not even take extra penny. He gave them the interest, and now they are going after him. Oh, you have overvalued. They are looking for any reason to put the man down. You see, I speak against him, right? I just, five minutes ago, I told you what he is doing. But obviously what they are doing is evil. They are not decent. That's why we cannot trust the system. Like, we say that we have democracy, we have election. We don't. How we can trust the election if, if, if anyone can send a, a printed page by mail? What they will lose if everybody will vote, will go and have his ID with him? What they will lose? They will lose the election. Because then they cannot do fraud. 
because we don't know who is making election. People are dead, they are voting for them. Democrat is very dangerous. You know, this last election, actually, I learned how dangerous they are. And Republicans are very naive. Until now, they think they can win the second election. Well, if they were able to do this, the, the, what they did last election, why they wouldn't do it again? Are you with me? If they can do it last last election, will they can do it now? And you know, you ask yourself, why Trump did not change from the first day he'd been elected, he have the majority in the House, have the majority in the senators. Why he did not clean the House? He did not. He was stupid. Shouldn't he change the election law when he was in charge in the Senate and in the Congress? He have full control of both. Stupid. He was busy meeting with this guy, the mentally guy, mentally ill. What's his name? The, the singer? Meeting with the Kardashian? I mean, are you stupid or what? You are a president of USA and you bring Kardashian to meet with her. Who is Kardashian? Who are those people? And this is how you say that your president have a brain of a mosquito. He is a president already and he needs the support of Kardashian with her boobs. That is a booby trap. Isn't it, this is an insult? You are number one person as a president in the world. And then you bring those potatoes, low class people who make their money from their body, from showing, from stripping. What you will do next time you go for election, you bring Andrew Tate's? I will not be surprised, by the way. <laughs> I will not be surprised because they have no ethic. They will use anything, anyone. They think that he can support their election. So do you understand the problem? This is why if we want to vote, we should try to find somebody. He is conservative, a Christian, for real. Those, they have nothing to do with conservative. Those, they are just businessmen. Sex, money, fun and power all those people they go and they meet in the golf club the business of america is done in the golf club war and peace in golf club rich people the rich they rule and the poor is the fool And you believe the speeches and you get excited. I can advise him. You see, people like Trump, they cannot have advisor. Did you notice that his guy, he keep firing his official every two weeks? How many foreign minister he has? Nobody changed his foreign minister as he did. How many minister for justice? I mean, this guy, he keeps firing people every two weeks. The head of his staff, the attorney, everybody. He's messed up. He's a spoiled man. He grew up as a rich person, rich boy. Women, parties, drinking, TV show. You know, uh, and now he became the president. He thinks it's the same thing. He still deal with himself as a president, the same as he was a boy for show. Can Trump win once again? I think he can win if there's election. But if the claim that they won the election by false vote, 
then how we can trust that there is an election and why he is going for election if they can do it first time when he is the president? Listen to me carefully. If Biden was able to corrupt the election when Trump was in charge, Biden will not be able to do it when he is in charge. And here you ask yourself, why even Trump is going for election then? Isn't it weird? If you know they are cheaters and they will cheat, why you are going? What the point of this election? Or what they need to do? To do what the same what they did last time. Who do you like in politics? I like nobody. It's not about a person, it's about what they do. <clears throat> anyway who should be the next president I think uh, the sentence the you know uh, he is a smart he's educated uh, his wife is very smart too he have a good advisor I, I heard her making a speech uh, and you know he did a lot of work not like Trump this guy he, he you know he drove those nuts the woke culture like crazy this is the guy they fear. Trump is nobody. Trump, Trump, if he take the election again, he win. All what he said before the election will not happen. Lock her down, lock her down. Second day, he's shaking hand with Hillary Clinton. He's a talker. After he become president, he will do nothing, if he become. The census is the man they fear. This guy, he gave his crew Disneyland. Disneyland is like an empire in Florida. They have their own land. They have their own police. They have their own governor. They, they, they are independent. They are totally independent. I don't think the sentence will lose to Biden because he is the man, my friend. And even if he lose, better than having a, a loser as a president. Trump will be a loser again. He will spend his time making a speech about how good he is, how smart he is. The only thing he will do good, he will start drilling oil and the guy's price will go down and prices of food and everything will go down. Okay, that's wonderful. But that thing can be done anyway, by anyone. If Trump he won, he will spend the first five weeks talking about how good he is and how smart he is and how stupid everyone else. And then he will hire people who praise him, which means he will hire people who they are hypocrite. Because the second you criticize him, he will fire you. So the fool will stay a fool. He will not accept anyone. He work with him, criticize him. So he will not learn from his mistake. And he will not correct his mistakes. However, if you ask me, for sure I prefer Trump over anyone from the other party. Like imagine now this guy Biden, he died. I mean, that would be horrible. We will have this uh, laughing machine, Harris. Ha, ha, ha. What do you think about Vivek? I mean, this guy should not even be in the stage. He's just a kid. Go right now, check where he is. I'm sure he's in the bar. Presidency should not be for someone too old. He cannot remember his name. And should not be for someone is too young for it's easy for him to be doomed. Should be for someone is a smart, intelligent, educated, have experience. Not just a guy, he just took off his jeans and he is 30 years old and now he want to become a president. Kid, he's a kid. His friend will call him, hey, should we bring the girls? A party? Imagine Hunter Biden become the president now. And by the way, Hunter is way older than this guy. So don't do it. It's a kid. 
It is just a kid. You have always to have somebody have experience. And you know, age is very important because, you know, when you are just a, a very young, uh, life will take you, you know, uh, many temptation. You, you have different interests. Your energy in different place. You need an older man, stable. He have a, you know, he have a wife. He's married. Uh, he is decent. He have a good reputation. And the same time, he prove himself in things he do, like the sentence. Trump is an idiot. Biden is idiot. The only one was a smart. By the way, between them, it was Obama. Obama is a snake. When Obama took the office, the first thing he did. He fired all the high officers who they are Christian conservative in the army and he replaced them with the woke officers. See what they do? He start, he is like Erdogan, learning from his cousin Erdogan. Erdogan, he took all the judges who they are liberals. In the case of Obama, he did the opposite because what make him survive is the liberals. So he took all the conservatives from the army as high ranks. What Trump he did? Nothing. This is why when this happened, none of the officers in the army support him. I'm talking about the high rank officers. He's stupid. He was busy doing stupid things, meeting with the Kardashian and the other singer and the other guy who is supposedly like they consider him racist inviting you know people to the White House to do stupid stuff going to Saudi Arabia for things we do not need and he is proud about a check from Saudi Arabia he is proud about peace agreement with Israel and the country inside is the worm is eating his White House Before you go to check what's happening outside, you better clean your house first. All right? Before you go abroad to help Israel, he spent a lot of time about Israel. But he did not notice what's going on behind him. And then when the election came, surprise, surprise, the idiot, he found that he was an idiot. All right. <clears throat> and you know, me, myself, when this guy, he was elected, I was so happy, extremely happy. We don't want to have Hillary Clinton, right? And then when he went and he says Qatar and Muslim Brotherhood, he want to put them in the in the list of terrorism. I said, finally, there's a guy who will say the truth. In fact, what happened now in Israel, if this donkey Trump did not protect Qatar at that time, the attack today never happened. Because the Saudi, they were planning to invade Qatar. Even in the last week of his presidency, he forced Saudi Arabia to lift and open the borders on Qatar. If you don't believe me, go check it out. He have five days left, I remember. Five days left. He spoke to the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia to lift and open the borders with Qatar. A week after they shake hands. All because of him. Otherwise, Qatar, the terrorist country, number one supporters of the world, or Muslim Brotherhood, Hamas, the prince will not be there by now. The Saudi and the Emirati, they were planning for invasion, and they can destroy his kingdom, so-called kingdom, in five minutes. He's no match for them. It was the stupid Trump. Why? Money. We know why. All right? Now I'm sound like Jordan. I'm sound like nobody. Who is Jordan? Patterson? 
facts my friend facts if i am i lying go check it out did he force the saudi to open their borders to qatar five days before he left trump even he warned the saudi when they were thinking of invasion that i don't approve that and we will not stay watching because remember the american they have big troops in the gulf specifically in qatar it's a fact don't tell me sound like jordan you sound like a fool he protected qatar okay how you explain to me you go and you say qatar should stop supporting terrorism he meant who hamas muslim brotherhood and then two weeks after we rent the building of his son-in-law and then five weeks after we sell qatar f-16 how they are supporting terrorists and then we sell them the most advanced weapon america have you tell me are they terrorists or not Have you ever heard of somebody he's, he sell weapon to some, a country supporting terrorists? Did he lie when he said they are supporting terrorism in the high level, which means the royal family, they are the one doing it? Yeah, just, uh, you know, just say, you know, this is what most of people do. The second you say something against someone they like, eh, they start spitting at you. Right? They support terrorists and we give them and we sell them weapon. How that work? Right away, he accused them of terror. I mean, yesterday you accused him of terror. How it work? Imagine I go and I say to you, Hamas, we should, uh, uh, they are they are terrorists, and then second day I sell Hamas uh, F-15, F and the deal is $12 billion. How that work? Like, did magic happen? Did they stop supporting terrorists? So you tell me, you know, you keep saying to me, you are sound like this. Foolishness. Money worshippers. Zero ethic. How you think Islam will evolve in the next 50 years? I think the more time will come, the more, the more Muslims will become educated, the more Islam will die. See, most of countries where they are attached to Islam, most of them, they are uneducated. But in case you do not know, a lot of Muslims who come to the West, they leave Islam anyway. Like maybe like there is some, you know, like you know, people you know, they make videos, etc. They are coming, they are a migrant, but the majority of Muslims are leaving Islam. Like as an example, Iran. I believe Iran, as soon as the regime collapses, Iran will become big number of it Christian. We do not know if the majority will become a Christian, but obviously Iran is not going to be in the future Muslims. If you go right now to Turkey, Erdogan is uh, gathering his group and his party, but he, in order to rule, he don't have the majority of Muslims. He have the majority with nationalist, uh, Ottomanist, all kind of like groups, let us say they call them right wings. The one who want to have empire, the Ottoman empire, you know, he, associ he associate himself with many groups in order to be a majority. But he cannot be a majority by the Muslims only. If you go right now and check how Turkish people, how women they dress and what how they live, you will find that where is the Muslims? Night clubs, nakedness, the beach is naked. I mean, you name it. So the appearance those countries are Muslims. 
If you go to Egypt right now, belly dancing is the normal dance there. Nakedness is the normal way. Drugs, hashish, go to Morocco. But in appearance, they are Muslims and they are conservative. But in reality, Islam is dead there already. Who is a Muslim there? Even Saudi Arabia now, you can eat in the street in Ramadan. Women, they walk without any hijab. Women, they can drive cars. Women, they are wearing jeans. Women, they are wearing short. Who can believe this, that Saudi Arabia will be like this? It's impossible. And if this is the center of Islam, it's like this. So what is left? And you know, this is why I say it's very important to have a terrorist or dictator as a leader in the Middle East. When I say a terrorist, it doesn't mean Hamas or, you know, ISIS. I mean someone like the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. He's a terrorist. If you don't agree with him, he would die. So he said, we don't want uh, this uh, Sharia police no more. Ah, people pray, not pray. Who dare to open his mouth? All those religious sheikhs in Saudi Arabia, suddenly they are dead. Nobody dared to open his mouth. And if there is a few, they open their mouth, they are dead already. Dictator is the only one who can change the direction of a nation in the Middle East. He said women should don't, you know, none of the business if you, you know, women wear hijab or not. Yeah, women in the street wearing no hijab. And now they have uh, uh, theaters, uh, they have nightclubs, uh, they have uh, uh, a competition for music. Music before it was haram. Who dare even to play music? The first bicycle came to Saudi Arabia, a guy, he was abroad. He brought with him a bicycle. He took the bicycle on the street, he drove the bicycle, he came back home. Few hours after the police came to his house and they have an order from the Sharia court to execute the devil bike. They consider the bicycle the devil bike. This is how savage they were. So, from people not long time ago, executing the bicycle. A guy, he have a ducks. You know, he made a concrete containers for his flowers in his yard. In the shape of a duck. Somebody came to his house. And he reported him to the Sharia court. Suddenly, inside his house, like there's five, six hundred people. The whole town is coming. Allahu Akbar and the judges come in and the guy wearing a mask and he have a sword in his hand they knock at his door what I did what happened they said you have idols in your house me I have idol where I swear by Allah I don't he said no, no you have idols open the door they look yeah he have idols he have ducks and then they open the doors all the way the two metal doors like the two uh, side of it and the crowd came inside, and then the sheikh, he, uh, he read the judgment of the Sharia court, and then the Sayyaf, the guy who hold the sword, he carried the sword, Allahu Akbar, and he broke the neck of the idol, which is a dark container, plant container. And the crowd chanting, Allahu Akbar, Takbir, Allahu Akbar. This is how savage they are. Now, this is Jeddah. <laughs> this, is the, this is the Middle East. This is, this is Saudi Arabia. This is what? This is Saudi Arabia. Now. What happened?
So it doesn't matter how much they claim about Islam. And you know, you will notice that those who they are living in the West is too much Muslims, more than the Muslims in the Islamic countries. Mostly I notice actually, those who they are more attached to Islam is those who live in the, in, in Asia. Like, you know, you will see in Indonesia, a girl, she is uh, five years old, she's wearing hijab. In the Middle East, nobody do that, you know? Nobody care for Islam. Islam is dead, really dead. And actually, after all what happened in the last few years, those who, in those countries, they noticed that they got nothing except garbage from this cult religion. Like, look at Syria now. Destroyed. Look at Iraq. Look at Libya. Name one place, a group who they are, Islamist, brought something good to it. Yemen will never be Yemen again because the Islamist is involved. Shia versus Sunni, they will keep killing each other forever. Same as Syria, same as Iraq, same, you know, and they, people will reach the point where they understand that as long as our problem is a religion, we will never have peace. And then they will give up this garbage. The second issue is education. As long people are uneducated, then people, they, you know, this Islam garbage will stay. You will notice that Hamas is a flourishing in Gaza. Why? Because in Gaza, there are very little number of educated people. Women just make babies, you know. The new generations, maybe 30, 40 years from now, if they are better educated, they will not be the same. Education subdued Islam, changed Islam. Like you see this uh, uh, Mimi Hijab, he talk about Gaza, he support Gaza, but he, because now he live in the West and he became more educated, he don't join jihad, he don't want to kill anybody, he don't kill anybody. But yet he claim he is very conservative, but you know that a conservative Muslim is somebody join jihad. And he kill for real. Not somebody go and make his speeches on YouTube. Syria should belong to Israel. Well, you know, based on the biblical, uh, the promise to uh, in the Old Testament that it is from the river to the sea. But if God can make such a promise, well, that's good. But for now, Syria is not for Israel. I mean, the Israelis have a hard time to take over Gaza. They have a hard time to take their own temple. It's in, the, in their hand, and they are, you don't have a leader. You don't have, you know, you're, the leaders in, in Israel, they are potatoes. The temple is in the front of them. It's across their eyes. They can touch the wall, but they cannot go inside it. And you are talking about Syria. Go take the temple first. They don't have a real leadership. They are just doing partition. And all what they care is to avoid conflict, but the conflict will come. They avoid it, they think it's not coming, but they never solve it. Take the temple, build it. Actually, this is the time they should, right away, the first thing they should do after the attack in Gaza, because when Hamas attack, what they name the attack? The flood of Al-Aqsa. Shouldn't you respond B by taking Al-Aqsa? To show them that next time you do such a thing, the response will be massive. If you have a real leader in Israel, the response should be, take the Aqsa, not take Gaza. The first thing you do, you take Al-Aqsa. You attack us because of Al-Aqsa, here we go. You are out. And who can stop them? The same, nobody can stop you to go to Gaza, nobody can stop you to take the temple. So why you don't take it? Can they stop them? All those who protest, let everybody protest, who care? Actually, they have full control of the temple. Yet they allow the Muslim to do the take to take the top floor of it. 
Just tell them no more, that's it. Take it, even in their book, it is your temple. What is my opinion of Assad? Well, he is a dictator like the rest. And he is better than the rest. And in fact, the stupid American, they made this guy become a toy in the hand of the Iranian. After the American, they support the terrorist in Syria. Even Netanyahu, he support the terrorists in Syria. This guy, he found himself, he have no friends, only the Iranian. So instead of making it better, we made it worse. So the stupid American and the stupid Netanyahu, they made Iran have full control of Syria right now. So now the president of Syria is not independent no more because he need Iran, he's bankrupt. He need Russia, he's bankrupt. This is how stupid the American are. They could not take him, they could not replace him. And in the top of that, they brought Iran to the borders of Israel. Before the war, Iran was not there. Even Hezbollah was not there. But now the Assad became captured by Hezbollah and Iran because he needed their support. Thanks to the American and thanks to Netanyahu. Very stupid. Do you think we will get the hostages back? You see, my friend, if you have a leader, true leader, getting the hostages back should be the last thing. Thinking too much about the hostages is your weakness, is not your strength. Hamas, they, did, you, did you ask yourself why Hamas took the hostages? They knew that those potatoes in Israel, they would start crying, bring us our kids, bring... So a real leader says, I will bring you the head of every Hamas. As long you are begging for your hostages, that mean they are abusing you and they have control of you. And that's why they took the hostages, because they knew your weakness. If they knew that you will not care for the hostage, they will never take one. But because they knew, They knew your weakness. The stupid Israeli Netanyahu, many years ago, he himself, they kidnapped just one soldier. And in exchange for that, he released 1,000 something Hamas. So he told Hamas, oh, what you need to do, kidnap. If for the sake of one, he released 1,000. Look how stupid he is. Look how donkey he is. So he invited the terrorists to kidnap more. He gave the very stupid wrong message. My friend, when I say they don't have a real leader, I am serious about it. They don't. And right now, what they do? 50 for 150. Okay, hold on. What about you say either all or nobody? either all our hostages or nobody of your prisoners. What 50 for 150? At least says 50 for 50. I mean, who's the stupid here? You are taking over the land, you are winning the ground, and you can kill them. And now they are the one who control the number two. This is showing you that Netanyahu never changed. He left as a donkey, never come back as a horse. If I am the one in charge, my first message for Hamas, I don't care if you kill them all, you are dead. I will give you a chance maybe to survive if you surrender and give me the hostages. Otherwise, you are dead anyway. And as long you are capturing the ground anyway. So what are you worried about? They are worried about politics. So again, we go to zero. Politicians are not leaders. 
They are not. If somebody kidnap your son and he says to you, give me, etc., I will release him. And let us say they keep their word. They kidnap your son, they release him today. Okay. Now they knew that they have a bank account open over the need to kidnap your son again. They kidnap him second time. You give them the money. They kidnap him third time. <laughs> you just told them how to open the faucet. You're stupid. It's evil what you can do about it. And time will come, you will be out of money. And then what they will do? They will kill your son? I, this is a joke, I say. Like once a, a group of terrorists, they kidnapped me. And they called my dad. They said to him, you know, you pay us $3 million, we release your son. My dad, he says, I will pay you $3 million if you keep him. This is what you should do. It's a wartime. Sacrifice is a price. It's not an option. You win to win a war. You cannot win a war by being a politician or have a soft heart leader. You have to be tough. You have to learn that win war, the price for it is blood, not ketchup. How they will win a war now and they are negotiating with Hamas over now? They knew that still they are the same. They said we want to kill every one of them. How you want to kill everybody one of them and you are saying give us 50? So now what we will do with the second 200? When I say stupidity is amazing, I have my reason. Anyway, guys, I'm not going to keep you longer. Uh, maybe you want to go and watch uh, uh, Andrew Tate defend Hamas. <laughs> I see uh, Apostate Prophet and David Wood, they are live on air and they are uh, uh, getting Andrew Tate busted, supposedly. He defend Hamas. Yeah. Why he don't go and join Hamas? I mean, what's wrong with those people? Everybody defend Hamas by microphone. Oh, okay. Well, Hamas. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I hope he will defend Hamas when he goes back to jail. Let us see. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. Uh, as you know, I don't keep my videos, so if you want to download, feel free. You know, download the video before we take it down. Uh, I will leave it maybe until tomorrow or the day after. And after that, if you wish, you can, you know, you post it whatever you want. Always remember, when you speak about something serious, don't be just a fool who follow what they say to you in the news. Don't. When they make speeches, don't take their speeches for granted. Only believe on the result you see. Everything they say, they are doing part, uh, you know, politics. So Netanyahu now he is saying he will finish all of Hamas. And now he is releasing 150 prisoners. So now 150 fighters, they will join. And he is saying, by the way, that those are women and children. But the fact they are fighters. So 150, they will join the terrorist fight. Where? Where they will go? Are they going to send them in Egypt so they can kill some Jews there? Are they going to send them to Europe so they can attack some synagogue? Or they will send them to Gaza so they will attack the Israeli army? He is just an idiot. You lost already more than 60 soldiers to be there. And now you are telling your people you cannot get the hostages unless you negotiate. So negotiate from the beginning then, if this is the, if this is the scenario. 
if this guy stopped from taking Gaza, all of it, he will be the biggest shame in the history of Israel. And let us see what will happen. Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you soon again, God is good. So is Jesus. I mean to that. Take care.